Monday, March 9th, 2020. I would like to welcome you all to the Wilmette Park District Regular Meeting Board of Park Commissioners. The first item on our agenda this evening is a roll call. Commissioner Abbott? Here. Commissioner Murdoch? Here. Commissioner Schisler? Here. Commissioner Clark? Here. Commissioner Goble? Here. Commissioner Anderson? Here. Commissioner Wolf? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Next on our agenda is approval of minutes from our February 10th, 2020 meeting. May I have a motion, please? I'll move. A second. Are there any comments or corrections to the minutes from February 10th, 2020? <coughs> Hearing none, may we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott? Uh, yes. Commissioner Murdoch? Yes. Commissioner Schisler? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Goebel? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is communications and correspondence. There was one email that came prior to this packet going out last week um, in regards to stormwater, and I believe there were a few others that have come in since Friday that have been um, forwarded on, and they will become part of mm -hmm. the permanent packet moving forward. But do anybody else, anybody else have any additional correspondence or communications? The correspondence I received, I forwarded to Steve. Forwarded Same. Steve. So yeah. everybody has yep, those, came in, those today. came in today. Okay. Um, so we're going to switch things up a little bit in our meeting tonight. Before we take recognition of visitors, we're going to have a presentation um, from our engineering consultants so everybody has some information, the most current and up-to-date information, um, and then we'll take recognition of visitor comments. So I will turn that over to our stormwater engineering presentation. <laughs> so Matt Moffitt from Baxter and Woodman will be presenting. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, do you have the, ex the six exhibits to pull up? You were doing that. Sorry. I, I can. Give me a second. Apologies. Um, well, he's doing that. Uh, so what we wanted to present on here, I'm, I'm Matt Moffitt with Baxter and Woodman, um, part of the design team for the village of Wilmette, um, designing this uh, underground structure and um, the associated improvements um, on the park district property and throughout the village. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we've been working closely with Walt Hamilton, the uh, Park District's engineer, kind of fine-tuning and finalizing uh, what our final surface is going to look like. Um, we're still going through that process with finalizing the grading, talking like inches, an inch here or there, just to make sure it's, it's really just right for the Park District. Um, one of the things that Walt Hamilton has been working with us on is making sure that the um, the field, the final resultant fields um, over and in the within the construction limits around the vault, are um, a, a designed, engineered playing surface. Uh, we're we're looking at the topsoil, making sure that it has appropriate mix of sand and clays and organics and silts, so that it it's an ideal growing medium for the grasses. Uh, working with your um, Park superintendent is their title. Mm -hmm. superintendent um, on, on and in Gwalt Hamilton on making sure that that it's an ideal mix. We're not just going to be putting back the topsoil that's there. We're going to be improving it, the um, top surface of it for that growing medium, um, as well as the uh, um, ideal seed mix for this. The recommendation from the park superintendent was that she recommends seed. I don't know if that's been decided on. Currently, it's been. Topsoil has been the, or sod's been the plan, still is, but I know that that recommendation just came this week in um, a memo to you from Walt Hamilton. Um, <clears throat> in addition to the, um, the actual physical media, the, the organics and the clays and uh, sand um, mix of the topsoil, we're also working with the village's um, agronomist, that's a new word to me, but uh, someone who studies the, the, the mix of the topsoil, but also the nutrients and the pH and all of that, making sure all of those are the ideal mix, um, similar to in, um, what, what the Park District is doing with the golf course right now. So making sure that we're getting that ideal growing medium for the, the grass. Um, and <clears throat> so w the next part is the exhibits. Um, those are ready to come up? Yeah, they're ready on my computer if uh, they want to come up. up. So, <coughs> as, as been, so in, in addition to the... Let me move the, over here. Hey. Me, Thank you, Steve. Let me do that for you. In addition you. to the soil medium itself, the growing medium itself, uh, we've also been working on fine-tuning the grading of the park um, and identifying where and how we were, we're going to have drainage structures. Um, so we're looking at, you know, a, a nice slope over the... Um, park vault. I think we're at about 1.2 percent right now, slope over the park vault. We were looking at 1.4 earlier. Uh, working with GHA, we've determined that that's 
going to be um, going to work out and, and, and still be a good condition because um, the concrete structures underneath that are that they're they have open joints on the top they're spaced eight feet and 16 feet apart so really it's like uh, it functions as a grid of under drain throughout the whole vault um, we aren't putting any clays solid clay back over the vault it's all topsoil over the vault so that it'll be able to drain through down through the topsoil hit that concrete roof surface find its way to one of the open joints uh, we have fabric over the joints so we're not just dumping dirt in and the water will trickle down into the vault and then uh, we've got open joints in the bottom where it can infiltrate back in the ground or flow out through the gravity drain that's associated with the, associated with the vault um, <coughs> the exhibit up here is showing all of the proposed structures for community playfield both fo for the village part of the project uh, those associated with the vault and for the school district and or park district drainage uh, we're going to get i'm going to get into some detail explaining what they each are and why they're there um, one thing I wanted to point out and make clear is whether I'm talking about access points for the vault, manholes, catch basins, inlets, all various types of um, cylindrical underground structures. Whatever size the underground structure is, what we're going to see on top is a two-foot ring, um, exactly what's out there right now. It may have a closed grate, it may have an open grate. Anything associated with the vault will be locked and bolted down. So. Um, students or others can't get in there um, so what we're showing here the reddish orange dots as I'm seeing them are all structures that are proposed to be buried so these will be six inch the top of the the, the steel two foot diameter um, opening will be six inches underground with the sod over the top of it um, they're 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 there to provide access points should um, we need to get in and maintain or clean various parts of the vault and or some of the um, external associated structures where we don't have to have an open grate letting water in um, and we're able to bury that so um, they give access for need when it arises but we, we're able to not have them on the surface and thus not affect the playability of the fields uh, the blue circles are open lidded structures so these are um, mostly uh, drainage for the park itself <coughs> and the uh, and a couple of them are vents for the vault so the vault we need as water comes rushing into it from our two big pipes from the north and from the south all the air needs somewhere to go normally that's served by the by the access points in the ceiling of the vault but since those are kind of centrally located in the fields we've um, connected pipes to the side of the vault and extended those vent that venting out to the side of the play fields um, for, with an open grate so that air can come out as that rush, water comes rushing in. You can see what those are in a little more detail in a minute. And the green are the closed lid structures. So these are installed for allowing a pipe to turn or, or an access of, of a conjoining pipes. We don't want that, uh, that happening without a structure. So, um, and, and that cannot be buried, is that correct? Uh, they can be buried. So any and all of the structures that are um, associated with the park district school district drainage system can be raised lowered buried relocated as the park district sees fit any time in the future they're they're there for the sake of draining your facility um, the only structures that have to be on the surface are the vents for the vault and we've, we've pushed those out and could you clarify too that there are c existing um manholes there that are correct. going to be removed correct there's about eight i believe that are going to be removed um, and several that are going to remain in place um, so getting <coughs> into a little more detail different ways to look at this next one please so this is an exhibit of um, all of the structures that we'll see from the surface so basically we've gotten rid of all of the orange dots it's a much less busy looking uh, map this is both for the village um, facilities and the school park district drainage facilities um, again blue is open lid green is closed lid one thing uh, to, uh, I'll go to the next one um, and, and to reiterate we can go over the green ones mm -hmm. okay so green ones can be buried I'd, I'd you know okay. work with your engineer to determine the right solution but um, they can all be buried like I said they can also be Perfect. relocated there your drain, sure they're your drainage exactly. facilities yep. that we're just moving out of our way and putting back. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see that over the course of the last several weeks, the blue 
indicates that these access points have moved out of the way of any mm -hmm. passerby or visitors. Mm -hmm. They're at the edge of the park or near a tree line where yeah. you know they'd be unlikely to interfere with you know children running or so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and with the ones that are buried six inches below, mm -hmm. there's no issue with grass growing above that or it may be being warmer or a different temperature or drainage Just being? Just the, the two foot diameter um, lid on top, it gets deeper all around there. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, that was um, our opinion, GHA has agreed. Okay. Um, and I, I believe it's been ran through your staff Perfect. fully. Yeah. So that, that since it's such a small area, if it was a much larger area, we'd have concern about that. But being a, being a smaller area that it is, we don't have concern with that. Perfect. Um, next slide. So this is an exhibit of the, it's basically the, the original exhibit mm -hmm. um, with all of the structures shown, but uh, looking at um, where we're looking at having a proposed under drain. Uh, this is gonna, this is one of the things we're still working to finalize, uh, working with G Walt Hamilton right now. Um, but essentially what the intent or goal here is, I, I explained how directly over the vault surface we're gonna have that eight by 16 grid that functions as an under drain. Um, we wanted to make sure that outside of that <coughs> grid, we've got similar drainage. So uh, we looked at where your play fields have been laid in the past and how, how we anticipate some of those might be moved around to make sure that all the play field areas have that under drain throughout so that it, it, the, the soil will experience a similar consistency um, for the whole extent of the field. There's also some areas in the south that we're still going back and forth whether we th with um, Gwalt Hamilton if we're going to be installing under drain or not. Um, that's not a debate or argument. We're just collectively working to see, uh, agree whether it's necessary or not. Um, next slide. So this is an exhibit of all of the buried structures. So um, two slides ago was all of the surface structures. This is again all the buried structures. None of these will be seen on the surface. Um, but they're there for um, maintenance and any other need. Mm -hmm. Here is, so this is showing the, the or red and green are showing which structures are for the village system versus the park and school district drainage system. So all of the red structures, these, this is showing buried and surface structures both. All of the red structures are the park school, are the village structures. All of the blue structures are the school district and or park district structures. I say school district structures, um, I believe um, everybody's aware, but the, a lot of the drainage comes from the west side of the school into the, into the park, currently into the surface detention facility around the Cottonwood Grove, now is being re relocated to an underground detention facility on the northeast corner. So when I say school, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, next and last slide, please. So this is showing just the village structures, what is um, visible at the surface and what is underground. The surface structures are the, the teal colored structures and the orange are the underground. Um, there are four structures on the surface associated with the with the vault um, and just kind of reiterate the explanation the northernmost one that's right in the center of the path um, that's where we're turning a large p pipe a 90 degree turn we need a an access point there since uh, <coughs> we're, we're centering between the trees we don't want to uh, impact the trees so our hope and goal is during construction we're out there we're going to be able to scoot that access point the 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 two foot diameter cover out of the bike path um, but there's no guarantees on that, so we're showing it in the bike path. It'd be a closed lid, um, similar to in the middle of streets and uh, that you see. Which you obviously have in streets all the time. Exactly. So, right. Exactly. But uh, you know, I, I think that there's going to be a good chance we can get out of the bike path. I'm just, you know, we want to show kind of worst case scenarios. Or, um, and then the other three teal circles are those vents that I was talking about. Um, <laughs> there was one change in that that uh, is in the um, memo and packet that was sent by Gwalt Hamilton, was it this morning, I believe, or, or later yesterday? And basically the, the southern teal circle that's right by the Cottonwood Grove, yeah. we've relocated that and we're coming straight off the south of the vault and pushing it real close to the property line. We just decided we could get that even further out of the way 
in case you know something anything wants to happen with the cottonwood grove in the future plant more trees they die off whatsoever we've got that out of the way um, and it's not going to impact any potential future uses. I was quietly asking Steve about that just now, so you're way ahead of me. Thank you. <laughs> Certainly. And um, like I said, we're, we're still going back and forth with Walt Hamilton, fine-tuning the design to make sure that it's going to be the best, most playable surface that you know, we, can, we can give. Um, we, we've been you know, really working with them, taking any of their suggestions and requests, and uh, really haven't had any pushback um, from us to them based, based on any engineering reasons. So it, it's just kind of taken some time to, to detail it out to make sure it's just right. And um, I expect that to come to the conclusion um, soon, in the next week or so. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions at this point? We might have more as we Certainly. discuss. Um, <laughs> I just had one yeah. question on, on the turf versus the seed. Is the reason we would maybe go with the seed because we, there isn't turf in that combination of seed that we're looking for? Or what, kind of what's the reasoning behind one versus the other? So uh, I'm not going to ask our brand new superintendent of parks to come up here. So I'm going to play superintendent of parks and probably get this wrong. But um, I know from discussions out at the golf course in particular, um, for long-term success of turf, growing from seed is a much better solution. Right. Going with sod is when you have time constraints. And so sod might still win the day in this discussion mm -hmm. because of the desire to get the fields back in play sooner, quicker, come the next season. But if there is enough time to potentially do seed and still put the fields in play and in service at the same time frame, then we might go with seed just for the long-term uh, benefit of the facility. It's also less expensive, I would assume, right? I think it ultimately is, but uh, as Matt pointed out and as the village would tell you, they, in all of their planning and all of their cost estimates, have been planning on sod because they're planning for the most expensive, you know, way to restore the park. All right, so let's have good weather and get it done quick. Mm -hmm. And she's not <laughs> telling me I'm wrong, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Christy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then just a comment for you and Bridget both. I mean, I know we've gone through so many iterations of this so quickly. I know it's been a tremendous amount of work, and um, it um, it looks uh, so much better and, and be able to address so many of our concerns that we shared last month. So, so thank you very much. We really appreciate it. I'm sure there's been some late nights. So thank you to both of you. Certainly, we want this to be the best product for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I have Brian oh, sorry, Brian. Go ahead. Um, so you've been working with, with Gwald Hamilton said for a couple of weeks now on the field design and, and they're doing a peer review as I understand as mm -hmm. well, correct? Okay. Um, you said that with regard to the soil that goes underneath the field above the tanks, that when we spoke, and I went to a meeting with the engineers last Thursday, so some of this is a continuing <coughs> conver conversation, just so people understand. Is that um, the meeting we attended? together and over the phone yes thank you right and it was uh, extremely helpful um, so uh, there was a talk about about roughly how thick was that above the tank roughly I know because it changes nominally about 18 inches of topsoil over the tank on average and what would on Minim average minimum so 12 up to a little over two feet and the top so many inches six inches I believe it's eight inches eight that's inches. one of the things where we're Top we eight inches. We haven't taken kind of the recommendation, worked it in is yet. On very that, but is the top uh, eight inches. It's, sort of, it, it's, a, it's engineered, it's a design of, of soil mixtures in order to provide uh, drainage. And below that, we were at that time on Thursday talking about using on site soils and top putting soils. top soils and putting them back in place. That's still the case, but you said that no clays, and I'm not sure the stat. Uh, well, I'm Sorry, to don't clarify. mean to pin you down. I just want to know no, did that I change said, when I said no clay, I was, I was um, my, my intent, my meaning was that as we get much deeper, yeah, three feet down, 15 feet down, it's pretty solid clay for most of the site, right? We don't intend to take solid clay that's going to be you know packed down and cre create an impenet impenetrable surface. So, we're still, but okay, so we're using there's, top soil. There, there's clays in any. Topsoil mix. wasn't a change in thinking from last Thursday. No, so no. you're going to find the right soils and use it. Yes. So everything, everything from the surface, from the grass to the tank top, is sort of engineered. Whether or not we find it on site or we have right. to import it. Correct. Okay. It sounds um, like that's to a level of detail not yet contemplated at this stage of drawing. 
for. Contemplated, but not yet included into the final yeah. final drawings and, and specifications, but, but, but discussed and intended to be included. Of course. You said that there's now, a, that this is new since Thursday, there's an under drain at the, around the outside of the tank. Is that over the tank? That was the, un, you said there was this new under drain outside the grid of a pipe, like a, a French drain. It's going under the fields. Is sheet three? It's up there. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so that is, that. is that over the tank? What? Outside. That's outside of the tank. Outside, outside of the outside. tank. Because mm -hmm. the tank itself functions as an under drain as well. Mm -hmm. And then that empties into what? Into the park? Is, uh, not into the. Is that no, it empty. It drains into the park storm sewer. So there's a storm sewer Out line that runs towards the junior There's high. two lines that run parallel north and south of of the vault. How will uh, that's 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 very good. Sorry. Uh, marking of buried structures. How do you guys know where they are? Uh, we'll have um, maps of them, and they'll go out there with a uh, utility locator, basically a metal detector. All right, you'll find them easily enough for that, right? <laughs> okay. Two feet. All right. I have a, I have I have a number of questions, and, and Bridget, do you mind coming up here as well, if I if I may? Is this the time? Sure. Okay. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, you did a, a lovely meeting the other night on Wednesday night. Hell, I learned a lot, so uh, it was very well done. Um, I just want to back up a little bit because we're trying to pass this IGA because schedule's important, right? And this project's important. It's like a health issue, right, for people. Uh, uh, you know, people kind of forget what public health uh, had to do a lot with it, storm water, with waste management and all that. So I understand this is important, and we've got a lot of people have got big problems we're trying to get solved. Um, this is the biggest project we've ever done here, and on a per capita basis, like twice as big as New Trier, right, and on a per okay. capita basis. Um, th but there's a lot of community support. I learned that as we went through this. But we need to start in April. That's correct. I will do my darndest to help you make that happen. Um, communication, we're doing better. And we're going to continue to do better. So I uh, appreciate you being here. You haven't, you haven't been here in about a year? I missed you. Is that right? <laughs> I, I feel like I saw her a couple I months ago. Been, been, so been, yeah. been here in a while. No, I mean, three months at most? A couple months, maybe. Yeah. Three months? Anyway. Did you miss Bridget? I we did. did. <laughs> I'd like to see, I'd like to see more of you. I'll come back to that. Um, and you've got a good contractor lined up. We have an excellent contractor. And so, uh, who is very, uh, uh, understands the, the um, takes care of the site, keeps the dust down, is very responsive to uh, the, the community's needs. One of the best, I don't know the name of this contractor, so I'm not going to vouch for him, but I've heard good things from the engineers. Sure. Can, may I on that point? Yes, sir. You, of course David? you may. I would like to hear that. The, the, the contractor that was the low, lowest qualified contractor who received the, um, who we're recommending that the Village Board award to is Burger Excavating in uh, full disclosure, my name is Bridget Berger Raish, but there is no relationship between <laughs> Berger Excavating, and I, although I'm asked that. Um, it's so name like that, though. They, they are an excellent contractor because they are very well resourced to do this job. They have the equipment, they have the manpower, and they have the experience. And even more so, they are the, if not the most experienced storm trap contractor in the Chicagoland area, they're certainly one of the most. So from that perspective, we couldn't ask for a better contractor. I also want to tell you that the team that we have lined up to manage the construction on behalf of the village, because we're, we're a small staff, so we hire folks who are going to be an extension of our, of our staff to monitor their construction, both the quality control as well as um, stakeholder involvement. So we recognize the park district is a primary stakeholder, as is the school district, as are the residents. And we, the team of people that we have handpicked to manage the construction, I think is excellent and will deliver a successful project. And many but of them are here today. So you've beefed up your staff. It's not just the village watching. You've actually hired another set of eyes who aren't working for the contractor. They're working directly for you. So you've Absolutely. got extra field personnel That's on correct. site. And they got a lot of f flagmen and stuff like that. I don't wish to minimize the neighborhood's concerns. I just want to, these things are things that I learned the other night. And um, I, I think the key takeaway is... They're going is, to talk, and I'll let them talk, too. Yeah, our staff is prepared to do whatever we can, whatever is in our control. Um, we've, you've got our commitment to manage that's, the project. That's good. I, wanted, I just wanted this board to hear it as well. That's, um, um, 
Yeah, so it was a very good meeting. No questions were out of bounds. You took, you were, you were willing to be there all night long. I, uh, that was great. Um, I'd like you to come to these meetings more often. In fact, I'd really like you to be here. If, if, if it's not that big of a deal, I'd love to get from you a memo at a minimum on a monthly basis. Sure. I'd like to read what you have to say about the project. But I'd also like to see you at this, these meetings. Now, I know you have a family. Brian, is there a reason why you don't feel like it's oh, we're getting enough information through yes. the staff? Yes, and I'll get into that later. So I'm just making a request here. I would love to see you more often at these meetings. You're an engineer. I claim to be one. Uh, and there's a language in that. It's like, and not everybody speaks that language. So I have a great deal of comfort being able to speak to the engineers involved and having certainly my concerns. I felt that that's one of the reasons I got elected and have my concerns put to rest and, and be addressed. May so I, I make like a comment? I just, I just wanted to note, so I'm a marketer and a technologist, but I don't interfere in the business of the staff of marketing the work. I think there is a point at which we need to not only trust the engineer and the engineering oversight and the village engineers and the contractors who are charged with upholding the charter we've given them. So I, I think I agree with you in that we have a fiduciary duty to our not only our citizens, I just think it's there is a board expectation of oversight that isn't the day to day well, working. I, I would agree there is an expectation uh, of oversight that we should be able to depend upon. I would like to see you more. Okay. That's my request. But we also don't want to overtax the village and no, no, having we do them not. attend all our meetings. No, of course not. But it's a seventy million dollar project. And it's in our parks. Agreed, but feel, it's still not our project. I mean, it's, you know, in our parks, but it's their project to manage. We'll get, uh, I, I hear your comments and I'm going to move on. Okay. And we'll talk about this more. Um, you were putting the designs together last fall, basically. Correct. Yes. And the drawings came out in January, January 9th, I believe. That's what's we on we the went drawing. up to bid on January, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Brian, do these questions have to do with the IGA? I think that's what we're trying to get to the Yeah, these, core of these that. questions have to do with the IGA, have to do with a lot of questions that are out there that people have in terms of why we're at, at March finally addressing some of these issues. And so, yes. And we're going to ask questions. I, we're not going to limit what we're talking about. No, I agree, but I think we're trying to be expeditious with time and no, trying to. Do you have some place to be? No, I don't, but I also don't want to waste time on things that have been discussed and determined okay. before. No, they haven't been discussed and they haven't been determined before. So the drawings came out in January. Okay. And um, we had a board on the 9th of January. We had a board meeting on, the, on January 13th. There was really nothing much reported at that meeting. You had bid meetings in late January and early February with the contractors, and you have one on board now. We had our last meeting on February 13th. So there's, you were busy, and you had a lot to do. Maybe why I need to see you more to talk to you, because I didn't know all that until I got the bid packages and looked at the dates. Um, you weren't given any design criteria for the fields when you designed the tank. And we're just doing that now, right? And this, there were certainly conversations with the park district staff early on. That sure, but there's a lot of design. engineering we're catching up on. Absolutely, certainly the detailed design, sure, the final grading and such. Okay. Usually when we design things, we get all the criteria ahead of time, so we don't have to retro it afterwards. But we're trying to play catch up. Um, that nine-inch bust that, was, that we talked about Thursday afternoon, it was kind of a big deal, but they thought they were going to work it out. So they made the fields flatter, and that helped uh, with the nine inch. I'm going to let the end. Sure. You're referring to the blue structure in the southeast location of the field. Right. So the, um, way, the so way this tank works, and I would just uh, just so people in the audience know, the way this tank works, how does the tank know that it's full? Well, that the low spot in the park is was supposed to be 10 inches above Meadow Lane. So actually Meadow Lane starts to fill up first before the park starts to flood. After 10 inches, they both start filling up. So that nine inches meant that the park started to flood pretty, you know, before, it wasn't working right. The design wasn't working right as long as we had a nine inch bust. But I think you worked it out, right? How'd you do that? Um, so 
I, I guess first, uh, one thing we, we went back and double checked on um, after the meeting that we had was that that inlet that was shown proposed there is an existing inlet at mm -hmm. that existing elevation. So yes. the six, the, it was 621 was what we were looking at. That's the current existing elevation out there. In the park? In the park right now. Okay. And that's the low elevation of the park? Currently. That right was, now. and that's 10 and a quarter inches above meadow line. I can't say off the top no, of my head no, right I'm now. I'm sorry. It's so um, what we're looking at, we're, we're still working out, um, actually in this picture, one of the things we're looking at is potentially relocating that structure further south. Okay. So that we're getting a little more open area. That's one of the things we're just today we're talking about okay not yet finalized um, I don't think that that's going to come up though uh, because that is the low point if we start raising that we're going to be causing big puddles elsewhere um, and, and potentially looking at filling the, the, the park um, but what we are going to be doing is either location where it connects currently or moving the connection one structure up um, where and we'll have a backflow preventer on the pipe so that water can't flow from the vault or from meadow up through the, the pipe and, and bubble out of that structure. Similar to, there, there's currently a backflow preventer. Um, this would be the fourth one we'd have on, but this one would be for the park. There'll be two for the sewer systems and two for the underdrain systems, so it'd be the fourth one. But this one would be like a backflow preventer preventing flooding of the park. Correct. And so water won't come up in the park. Uh, will the water reach a certain level in Meadow Lane and start to backflow in the park, or will this backflow preventer prevent the that? The backflow preventer would stop that. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, uh, uh, Bridget. So there's, uh, and, and May, um, and May's with Gowald Hamilton, but Tom couldn't be here, right? Is the peer review still going on with regard to Gowald Hamilton? Do you know that, May? Yes. So there's a peer review, and basically it's, it's to reassure us that this design makes sense, it's going to work, it's in our best interest. You are our engineer. Yes. Um, right. Yes. And that's so why you're here as Gowalheim and you, you work for the board, this board. Correct. Okay. Uh, we you. were engaged by the Park District to uh, look at the design of this in whole. Um, sure. We, we want to look at, our goal was to look at the, uh, the underground tank we're putting in here uh, to see if there's any potential limitations <laughs> to our park, you know, as far as, um, you know, playability and future expansion of the parks. Uh, any drainage improvements and long-term maintenance. That's why we um, talked with Christy a few times to, um, you know, talk through the, sea, you know, restoration and that. So at this point, like Matt said, we're still fine-tuning some of the um, okay. drainage structures and, and uh, uh, for example, that southeast, uh, for the southeast structure, we're still trying to make the best uh, recommendation to okay. how to place that one. Okay, so we're, we're going to try to vote on an IGA tonight, but you guys are still working on the peer review. I've got a lot of confidence in, in, in Matt and you guys to work this out, but it is, you know, in my mind, that's an open question, but I'm going to set it aside. I, I do expect, you know, we'll hear from you and you'll get this worked out. Yes, thank you. I have a question. So at this point, you're, though, you're confident with us moving forward with this based on the current engineering? Uh, yes, we Along have. Along with the fine tuning. Yes, yes. Uh, like you've seen, we have pushed the open structures as further as possible. Yes. Uh, we have buried all the structures within the uh, play area. Uh, like I said, there's a few structures where we need to talk to Steve and park uh, uh, staff to see where we want the future uh, play area mm -hmm. gonna be. So there might be some little tweaks here and there. Like I said, it's still moving target at this point. Okay, but as far as the tank construction and everything like that, you feel confident and putting it in our park. And yes, okay. and I think they, they have the, you know, right amount of topsoil and they're gonna have, uh, we're adding under drains um, beyond the tank area. So, you know, all the drainage we have recommended is, to, is suitable for the athletic fields drainage. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Meg. And Abrit, uh, go ahead. this is consistent with, this level of detail is consistent with this stage of drawing, correct? Are we at? Yeah. Roughly 60, 50, 75 percent drawings. Just no, the, well, the, the, the construction drawings have been bid and are completed, but this le level of final grading, even once we get out in the field and we 
actually do the work, there may be some finessing of that final grade. Pre-existing conditions after that are discovered That's in correct. fields, on-site modification. So the plants are never yeah. always quite done. They're right. an evolving <laughs> process. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, That's correct. And then I, I think I understand you're a civil engineer, May, with expertise in, is it um, specifically water, drainage, yeah. and so forth? I, I know I'm generalizing it um, as a licensed professional engineer. I know your expertise is a little more specific than the words I'm using, but <laughs> thank you. So just to clarify, the drawings were 100% back in early January. They, the set that was bid in January was a complete set, correct? Correct, but and there were addendums after that visit. during the bid period. Yes. But certainly by the time you set, you tied up the contractor, they were certainly 100% then, and you could say they're still 100%. But it, it, it's semantics. Yes, they're 100% done, but we anticipate there will be changes to those drawings. And there always will be, and there's change orders. Exactly. We discussed last month about scope changes, and I know that the terms can sometimes get used interchangeably. I know that in any project there can be an enormous number of change orders, but cha most change orders do not actually affect the design, the operations, and things like that. Um, I would like to be kept informed of scope changes. These would be changes that cha might have potentially changed the operation of both of our park and of the system. I would like to ask that the entire board <laughs> be Absolutely. made aware of that, not just I one certainly, commissioner. I <laughs> certainly agree. I, I certainly just want to make it perfectly clear. Well, we clear. did talk about last month. But I, I can't think of a situation where we'd have a scope change that would change the operation of anything we're talking about tonight. That I just want to make sure we're on board with that. It would I, have to be I, something. I realize it may, that may never come to pass, that's, but that's we are plan. kind of, we're approving a set of drawings. And we're I don't know if we are approving a set of drawings. That's not in our scope. We're not the IGA. IGA. We're the IGA. IGA. Yeah. <coughs> Part of the IGA. Part of the IGA. Is IGA. It is. Of it is. But the set of drawings is not within our purview as a board. Well, the structures that are part of our park are the exhibits. Yeah. Yeah. The exhibits, yeah. the exhibits, exhibits. are the yes. drawings. Exactly. Not the engineering drawings of underground yeah. and things like exactly. that. We don't approve that. Right. That's Correct. not in our yeah. scope. No. Agreed. And relative to this drainage and structure plan, I think there's language in there that the two engineering staffs will work together through that collaborative process and make sure that you get the product that is of best course. for you. Yes. All right. Um, Commissioner Abbott, I just, may I, um, back, going back to communication as we move forward through construction, um, I just want to make sure that your board is aware that we will have weekly stakeholder meetings, Who, whoever the park district would like to be there, Steve, whether it's you or Christy, to attend um, with the contractor, myself, our staff liaison, Lisa Brock, shout out to Lisa, so Great. she'll be a familiar face to all of you. And um, that we don't want big problems, little problems to become big problems. So we're going to meet on a weekly basis at a minimum and make sure the construction process goes as smoothly as possible. And who will attend those meetings? Who will attend? Yes. Well, there's stakeholder meetings. So I assume the school district will be there, the park district will be, will be there, we'll have the contractor there, our staff, of course, will be there, and our consulting team. What about the residents? Um, we, we can have stakeholder meetings for residents as well. It doesn't work that way. There, there will be varying levels Rick, of meetings. Yeah. You gotta, you'll, you'll get your chance, okay? All right, thanks. Um, <coughs> thank you. Uh, for the engineers, Matt. So this tank is 20 acre feet, right? It's a big, big uh, tank. It's collectively 20.2 if you count. Count ours. Yours and well. ours has is 1.6 acre feet, of which we're only right now uh, we only have a need for like 0.6 or less than 0.6, right? So the spare if capacity in our if, tank. If memory serves, the current permitted volume, so the volume that's required by the MWRD permits for the school district um, project that require the detention is 0 0.54 acre feet, um, yes. and the current available 0.54. Uh, storage is 1.66, I believe. Just over so an acre foot, which would actually allow for considerable additional construction so on the site. Or that's extra parking volume that is not that, that can be utilized for <coughs> something else, depending on how the park and school districts IGA for that. Impervious surface could be expanded greatly on the site, and it's being built into the tank. That's good. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yes. Just want to like we should know that a, there's an additional acre well, not, volume isn't. available that's not currently required, so it can be used for. It's it's um, got other plenty of capacity. That's correct. 
Um, the way the tank is designed, it takes water from two directions. It takes it from, like, let's just say Washington Avenue in that neighborhood, and it takes it from the south. It backs up from the south, and in case the system really gets overloaded from the northeast, it'll start to come in from that level as well. So the, the flow that comes in from both sides, you can see the pipe running up from the south. That's a five by six foot, five foot tall by six foot wide box culvert. Much the bigger than the inflow. Right. From the, the north. The, right. And the pipe from the northeast uh, running along the bike path and then turning down into the primary vault is a 36 diameter um, circular storm sewer. Um, so the b basically how both of those work via a couple different mechanisms, but as the existing storm sewer surcharge, they fill up beyond their capacity, then um, the, the water from the south, it basically just uh, elevations work out. Once the existing sewer fills up, the water will surcharge up that sewer into the vault, or you know, the box culvert there into the vault, bef um, mitigating flooding um, in, in the s southern area of this project limits. Um, the flow from the northeast there, uh, there's a, a large structure that's going to be in the intersection of Hunter and Illinois um, where the existing flow coming from that neighborhood will continue to flow into a sewer that goes up Illinois to Lake. Um, there'll be a weir structure, so an over a wall in the junction chamber that once the water reaches a certain level, it can overflow that wall and flow into the, the junction chamber, um, mitigating flooding in the northeast area. So, it, uh, the, so the one from the south, I and mean, that's sort of the immediate concern with the neighborhoods down there, the one from the northeast, when the system starts to fill up, this tank will start to fill, uh, take that water as well to relieve the pressure, the back pressure on that system, because that's high water and it keeps it from becoming low water somewhere else, right? Right. So it's a way of slowing down the water as it gets to the pumps, let's, let's the whole system res respond to the storm by, by putting that water in the park. It's a clever design. When you don't have pumps, Right? You have to be really smart. 100% gravity, no, no exactly. reliance on mechanical. Exactly. You have mechanical to be, you have to be, it's a clever design. It's very well done. Um, tree protection on the drawings. We talked about this uh, at the last meeting. Uh, right now there's fences at the, uh, at the drip lines, and the trees are pretty important. Mm -hmm. So I right. asked if we couldn't extend that. And I'm really going to depend on Gawalt Hamilton and our own people, but just let's let's move it out. And and could we at least on the drawings also label the undisturbed soil in the tree area? Like these areas should be remain. Didn't have a really accurate topo map, at least the one that I saw. Just want to be not just the tree protection, but is but does the undisturbed soil area is that bigger? Where is how big is the undisturbed soil? I'm just kind of curious. I just don't want to be pushing soil right up to the drip line mm -hmm. and creating a pond for that. So th those are important to me. And I, I believe that would be, I know they're important to the neighborhood. I just want to make sure that that gets taken care of. Um, I'd like to talk about the structural design. So uh, the tank has a flat roof. I know this is. I'm going to beg people's um, patience on this one, but it's important when I get when I finally get to the point. When we bury a round structure, a, a sewer pipe in the ground, thir three foot sewer pipe. It's made out of concrete, right? Might have a tiny bit of steel in it, but it's made out of concrete mostly. Most concrete sewer pipe has a steel. A little bit mesh. of steel, right? Exactly. But but the pressure is in on that pipe, right? So if the, steel were to, if the steel were to corrode away, the pipe still works. It doesn't require the steel for the pipe to remain uh, viable. It's not going to cave in. I would say if the steel in the pipe is corroding away, at least half of the concrete is missing. Yes, but I could theoretically remove the steel and the pipe would still work. It would still hold the load. It, the it wouldn't have its, the, the, the capacity that it is rated as. Rated for the 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 loading ra rating would would be greatly diminished. Okay, well, you and I will sketch it out one day and we'll talk structures. The tank, the tank is a com the lid of the tank is flat. Correct. And it's a combination of concrete and steel. Correct. Without the steel, that lid would fall in. I cannot say I am not a structural engineer. No, well, I kind of am. So uh, that's the way it works. The steel on the bottom holds up the concrete. 
It's in tension. Concrete can't take tension. So that holds up. So if that were to, uh, if that were to corrode, the structural capacity of that tank would be diminished until such time as it may even collapse. You designed this, this tank is designed for HS20 trucks, right? Correct. That is great. And so that allows fully loaded, like highway trucks to roll over this thing. Correct. And emergency vehicles, specifically fire trucks. Correct. And that's a thing, right? I mean, that's like you just can't go burying things in around town that can't take a fire truck, particularly here where if a school or if a house and they need to get back there, they're not checking maps to see where the tank is and saying, well, we can't drive on there. So that's a thing. That's important. Okay. So that's why it's the line of questioning here. Um, water is the enemy of buildings. It just is. So um, in the uh, seven ancient wonders of the world, the oldest one is the Great Pyramid. It's the only one still around. It's in, a, it's in a desert. It's really well designed. It's the only one still around. The first one to go were the Hanging, ba hanging Gardens of Babylon. That only lasted a few generations. In fact, we don't even know where it is anymore. But it was an irrigated garden on top of a building. So I'm just pointing out Water is the enemy of buildings. We are building a park on top of a structure. So it's not a matter of maintenance or if these tanks are going to last forever. It's how long will they last and, and what will be the situation. Because we're not going to notice it at first, but its structural capacity to withload a truckload may be diminished. I have no idea when that day will happen, none whatsoever. I've been told that these are 100-year tanks. Is that right? It's the design criteria. That's the design criteria. So presumably, in 100 years, we might have to do something about it. Now, water is the enemy of buildings, and, and water is the enemy of steel. And we are allowing the water to go through the tank, which is in the design. There's actually part of the design. That means the steel will always, well, it'll be wet, and it'll dry out, and be wet, and be dry out. So it's going to corrode. Is it being protected? The steel, is it, is it galvanized? I, as the extent I know is the steel is not coated. That was one of your questions. Right. Um, I, would pres I, I don't know whether that means it's galvanized or not. Okay, so I'm sorry for this technical discussion, but it comes back to the IGA, because the IGA is for a permanent easement. Um, and the village, when they came up with this plan, they, they, they said, they, I went to the meetings, they said conveyance really was the better solution. It would last longer. It really, it, um, it was more expensive, uh, but that's the way to solve this. We are basically allowing our parks to be used for a long term, but still temporary use of tanks. Now they may have to be replaced or something has to be done, but the tanks will not last forever. I'm not worried about a storm pipe buried in the ground. And if a storm pipe buried in the ground were to fail, that's an operational failure, not a life safety. It's nobody's falling in that hole generally. generally it gets plugged up and we open it up and we repair it. But in this case, it's kind of a life safety issue. So I am concerned about the IGA that shouldn't we be working our way, we have a 100 year head start and working our way towards a conveyance system uh, in the village. And that in 100 years, this could be a very expensive uh, fix unless we are keep working towards a conveyance system. Can I, I interject a point? I believe that the village has plans to routinely monitor the situation in the tanks to make sure that they're not in any kind of structural impairment. You can't, you cannot maintain this tank indefinitely. It will not last forever. True, but if they building, start to notice that there's well, we some... We keep a roof on this building, it could last forever. You keep the water out, you can, you can keep a building forever. But my understanding is if they start to notice any kind of structural impurities or any kind of dysfunction, then repairs or replacement would be done by the village, and that's part of the IGA that it's their responsibility. What's, I, what's do, the issue? I do I not know, I do not issue. know how to repair these tanks. I think that they will eventually fail. That's my, that is my point. So in the, end, in the IGA, we are giving the village a permanent easement to our parks. Now, I'm not going to be in 100 years. Nobody in, this, n nobody in here is going to live to, well, what, 140, something like that. So, um, so nobody's going to be around in 100 years. 
And so, but I do believe, you know, we're all impermanent. You know, I'm not going to sit here for very long. I'm, somebody else is going to take this seat. But in 100 years, I think smart people will be around and figure out what to do. I'm not saying that they, the, the village has to remove. I'm just saying that the question of the tanks should be brought back up again. Maybe another agreement. Maybe it's working perfectly fine. That's fine. So to my own board members, I'm simply, I, I took a while, but I'm simply saying I do not believe that a uh, permanent easement is, is a, a good idea here. And we can talk about that once I'm done with my remarks. So hang on. Is the language permanent or perpetual? What's that? Steve, is the language permanent or perpetual easement? Yeah, our attorney is in the audience to answer any of the legal questions. Hi, Andrew. Perhaps you can explain why that language was put in there versus sure. a temporary. Uh, for, uh, Andrew Payne with Tressler at the Council for the uh, Park District. Um, to answer your question, perpetual and permanent, it means the same thing. It's interchangeable from a legal perspective. What was that? Slow down. Slow down. Perpetual and permanent, permanent is synonymous thing. in this context, yes. So, and, and I, if you have additional questions, I. Well, you wrote a, a very nice opinion, and, and that uh, basically the gist of it, if I may, uh, if I may, uh, the gist of that opinion was is that when we give away easement, utility easements, we typically give away, not we, but anybody, they give permanent easements for utilities, for electrical lines or for uh, storm sewers or whatever it be, that typically they are, that because the need does not, do, will exist to, in, to infinity. Right? They Correct. will always need, they will always have that need. And so, and I would agree with you in most cases because, again, the pipes are small and their failure would not be a life safety issue. Plus, they don't tend to fail uh, like this. And you do have the need. In this case, actually, the entire sewage stormwater system would continue to function without the tank. It would, not, it would lose its storage capacity, but the entire system would continue to function without the tank. So I, I'm not I, know, yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, I can ask the engineers, and well, yeah, the it, it's true. So but I, I can, but what we were coming on before, though, is we're, we're granting a permanent access right to allow the village to have these structures in place forever. But the, the agreement is very clear, and it obligates them to maintain them in good working order in perpetuity. And yes, it could be a very expensive fix, and I won't pretend to get into how that or how that isn't going to happen and how you check it or you don't. But the obligation right. and the expense lays with the village in perpetuity to maintain these. Sure. So we can disagree on this, So, which is fine, absolutely <laughs> fine. Okay. Brian, what, is that what's new language, ultimately it's what's the language. issue that you're no, trying to language. get? It's been an well, issue. I'm talking yeah. specifically about the IGA and the, uh, and the issue of <coughs> permanent easement. Right. So but I have the engineers here to talk to about these particular questions. You know, I suppose you, you made a comment that perhaps in 100 years it it could fail. Well, then it's the village obligation to replace it. Right. I mean, I, I don't quite see yeah. what, no, what the, the village as you sure, point out. Sure have the you're trying to get are, to. Now, and it's been somewhere. in there for, for the four uh, months. I'm getting that to we've had it under I'm, what I'm getting to is that conveyance, which is a relative as as the existing stormwater system down Lake Street and all those as those wear out that we should have an eye towards the future and pulling these tanks out of our park. Because one, the tanks are not going to be permanent. And two, that's a really cheap time to put in the conveyance system. That is, we have a 100-year head start on a conveyance system here. And three, we really all ought to kind of go into this in agreement that that is our goal. That's our intent, is to try to give the, give the village this relief on these temporary tanks but any other goal. Not to say that in 100 years they couldn't all meet, get sit down, we won't be here, sit down and agree, but we should be telegraphing our intent here by granting a temporary, not permanent. With, I don't know that if, we I could, if I could jump in for a second, I've been quiet at this yeah. point. Um, Brian, I understand what you're saying, and, and I do agree with you in theory, of course, this structure will not last forever, neither will any of the, uh, the sewer pipes through a conveyance system. Ultimately, what we're agreeing to with a permanent easement, and I, I shared some of your concerns, and, and by the way, I appreciate your, um, your comments and Steve's work on this. Ultimately, the village will have to either A, replace this tank at some point, or B, fill this tank at some point, in which case we'll be back where we are again today, unless C, 
they increase the size of the conveyance system throughout the village. I think that's what you're trying to get at. And I certainly agree with you that over that 100-year period, I hope the village will invest in our storm sewer system to, um, to come up with a system as they replace pipes that wear out with a larger capacity system. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that. I would just say that I think that's ultimately a village decision, and our concern is that, um, that the village does protect us with respect to these tanks in, um, in these parks, and I think the agreement has been drafted in such a way that we're protected. And ultimately, how the village addresses future stormwater needs, whether they're 20 years, 50 years, 150 years, is a village decision and not ours. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. And uh, I will concede the point. If anybody else wants to jump on, uh, let me just say I'll concede the point. I wanted to make the point, and I felt it was, my, it was sort of my duty to make that point and to make my argument. Now, we're a deliberative body. There are seven of us up here. It doesn't mean you're going to agree with me, and that is fine. This is not a killer issue for me or the IGA, I, but I wanted to make my point. This was my belief and my opinion that it should be a temporary, but if this board decides it's going to be a permanent, I can abide by that. I want to go through these issues and, and address them one by one. <coughs> okay. Might so I'm going to get off that one. All right. Might we ask, I understand the difference between temporary and a permanent easement is that when the temporary easement expires, it becomes the park board's or park district's responsibility. Is that? No. No, no we, oh. we generally, when Maintain. we're dealing with the construction yeah. here, you, you typically give a smaller interest that's permanent. That's kind of mostly where the, mm -hmm. the structures are going to be buried. And then the temporary construction easement is designed for a limited period of time to allow them access. Sorry, these are. Mm -hmm. um, to allow them access to the site to complete the construction work. And then once they're done doing that, the temporary construction easement goes away and they're left with just the permanent easement. Right. But we discussed in a prior board meeting that if the easement is not perpetual, the main maintenance of the storm water system becomes the board, the park's responsibility. Yeah, we're talking two different right. things here. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you're talking about what is currently hundred, called hundred perpetual years from gets now, term temporary. If, okay. we, yeah. if we don't have a permanent easement, you know, whatever right, length right. they do have becomes, an easement, yeah. I think, after yeah. that, what happens? Commissioner yeah. Abbott's question, which I think came up in a prior board meeting, was the difference between perpetual and, and you know, a time-limited easement. In, with regard to the ongoing maintenance of the system. We do have the right to ask them to get out, but if we haven't been building towards the future, it's going to be tough for them to get out. The, the village, no, the community, will, the community will pay a price if we haven't been building towards that future. But again, I made my argument, and I can abide by the majority here. It's not going to kill my, you know, it's not going to kill me with regard to this IGA. I felt it, my, it, felt it was my duty, and it was a long argument. Oh, I'm sorry. And it was technical. Thank you, Andrew. I have a few others. Um, so um, God bless the Thornwood people. I, uh, they're out here, right? And um, you guys have been coming to meetings, lots of meetings, and you've had a lot of questions about when are we going to talk about some things. Um, I think it's a good time to at least kick the tires on some of these issues. Um, we have, it, previously in the IGA, we had asked for bathrooms both at Community Play Fields and at Thornwood. Um, this has been removed from there. We've spent a lot of time talking about bathrooms. We've spent a lot more time talking about bathrooms than we have allowed Gowalt Hamilton to design a play field, even though it's called the Community Play Fields. Um, but we spent a lot of time trying to figure and negotiating with the village about bathrooms. Well, we have never talked about, and I would like to hear from my fellow commissioners, because this can keeps getting kicked back and forth between the village and the bark board, are things that are important to this community group, which is spe specifically portable generators and underground pumps. We don't seem to ever talk about that. Now, we're not going to vote on that tonight, but I would like to canvass my fellow board members. Could you tell them how you feel about these issues? Are they a priority? Are they important? And I think uh, that they deserve I'd like answer. to start by saying I think everything that our residents bring to us is important, and I think they're all d good discussion points to have. However, at Thornwood, we don't have any kind of engineering whatsoever there to even begin to contemplate what will be needed to make the, the tanks effective. 
so I think it's hard to have a, a detailed discussion about what we think should be put in there because we don't know what the village will need to do to make that tank successful yet. Well, I would agree that we can't have a detailed discussion on it, but I'm really asking the board whether or not they would like to make the portable generator and the underground pumps as high a priority as the bathrooms. Again, I think it depends, for me, it depends on what the village says is necessary. I don't think we have to rank the priorities. Well, I, mean, well, I, priorities, I right? well I, look, it's an engineering solution. Yeah. I can tell you it can be solved. Yeah. Particularly a portable generator, done, solved. All we have to do is say it's a priority, done. No, it's not, it's not an issue of like detail. I would want to hear from the experts and the engineers to say this is what we recommend, this is why we recommend it, this is what it's going to cost, and to be able to look at all those factors together to, to make an informed decision based on cost, timing, noise, environment, things like that. I, I can't make a decision without having any – I'm not an engineer, so I don't know these – particulars in order to make an informed decision tonight about whether or not it should have an underground generator or an above ground generator of temporary gen I have I don't know yet you well, you know you want bathrooms uh, we've been talking forever about bathrooms I don't think that decision no. has been made either no uh, we yeah. well Remember no we we've been negotiating for bathroom for six months and we only told the community that was in an IGA last month and then we took it back out again because again it's not time to talk about it bathrooms are not taken out of the IGA And it's still in. Page so, 10. Yeah. Again, the IGA states we may do these things. The, none of them are set in stone Correct. that we're going to do any of these things. The village is proposing an amount that it would cost to do all of these things. If we choose to do these things, then they would pay us back to do them. But nothing is set in stone at this point. And if I could jump in on this point for a second, sure. because, again, I've, um, I've raised some of these same concerns. I think it, as um, Amy had correctly said, we will need significantly more information. Um, we will have further conversations about this, and we will make these decisions in the future. Just because these items are listed here, and I think I made that point very clearly at our last board meeting, it doesn't mean we're going to proceed with any or all of them. It just means that as we go through that process, if we do choose to proceed with any or all of them, the village is willing to fund a portion of the costs. Um, and so I don't think it is appropriate for us to have those conversations at this point. I don't think it's appropriate for us to talk about um, the pump system or a generator system, again, at this point at Thornwood Park. And I've had a number of conversations with the folks, folks at Thornwood. I understand their concerns, and I share um, some of their concerns. I'm just not sure that that's an appropriate conversation for tonight from a timing standpoint, Brian. That's my opinion. We've got a lot of people out here worried about this IGA and this project, and we've not done a good job of communicating with them. I'm really kind of like, can we drag out some priorities here? Can we talk about this project? Can we help them out? Because they keep coming to meeting up. They're getting tired of coming but, to But we also have asking. quite a few people whose basements are flooding, who I'm we also get, have an obligation an to take care of as well and to move in a timely manner. And this has been perpetuating itself for quite a long time, and that we should cross th those bridges when it's appropriate and when we have the ability to make informed decisions. No losers. So I, I, I have a great deal of sympathy for the people out here whose basements are flooded, and I am not trying to stop this IGA tonight, but I would like to have a discussion about the things that are concerning people in this, and people in this community who keep coming to meetings and can't get a discussion. Now, when they go to the village to talk about portable generators or underground pumps, they are told to come to the park district because the park district has to ask for that. So it's not a village issue. It really, we have to make this a priority. And when we say we're going to restore the park, to its previous condition, we got to stand behind that. We got to make it happen. It's up to us. And we will. I think that we have to do it in a timely manner, though, and get the IGA signed first so that we can move forward with those critical steps of having the discussions on what happens next. Many playfields. So, again, our goal here is to restore the park to its previous condition. So, We've, we've talked about various elevations. I will assure you that for the most part, what I understand is that the cut and fill, so we're not going to like have it too low or too, much, too high. It's going to have the same cut and fill. Uh, so the elevations, it will take the same amount of water as it ever did. We're going to cover up manhole covers. That's great. Trees, that's great. Well, that one 60-inch tree is coming down. You guys know that, right? You've seen that. I know you're not happy, but it's going to come down. And I gotta, I, it's got to come down. Um, the detention area, uh, that detention area berm's coming out, but here, um, the, the, neighbor, the neighbor drainage into the park 
that's important. A lot of these surrounding uh, houses, they drain in. I was pretty satisfied with what I saw, but there were some changes over there. Just, I just want to make it's, it's important, right? They can't be flooded. And I think you've got a handle on that. So we're down to, once again, we're down to bathrooms and lights and a, some sort of running path around the park. And again, we are telegraphing our priorities by, uh, through the IGA by saying that this is, this is the stuff that we want to talk about. We want to get the village to pay for bathrooms. We want lights, which has been, was uh, how, 10 years ago? When was, the, uh, when was that? Uh, there was a big blow up about lights. Now, that's not to say that it's impossible to design a lighting system that would work, low lights that would light that park. I realize it's a community and we got the safety of the kids walking through the park and stuff like that. It is possible and I'm not going to say, oh, we've got to get rid of that. But the running path, where did the running path come from, right? That is, that is new. So, I think that was discussed uh, in I think prior meetings. Yeah, and I think and it, it is only a potential item. I don't think anything has been determined about Again, nothing, nothing in there is, is that they're all potential items. Yeah. I'm really just sort of concerned that we are portraying that we do not want progress to happen. When we think about East Wilmette having had sewer and repairs more than 15 to 20 years ago and West Wilmette waits, um, <coughs> I feel that the pro process has been communicated frequently, and for those who follow the civic activity, it has been available. For those who have come to meetings, they've, and I see many familiar faces, I, I feel that there has been adequate communication. I recognize that as it becomes real, it changes for many people. Uh, but at the same time, I don't recall public meetings about the Locust Avenue sewer work, and yet it was a substantial project involving water movement. Um, and so if I weigh that and some other major projects that have occurred, I think there has been a good deal of transparency and a level of communication that has satisfied many members, although I recognize not all members of the community. And um, based on the discussions that we've had and the engineers have been available to us and um, having had a good deal of exposure to engineering and great respect for the variety of disciplines between um, civil, structural, uh, hydro, hydro, hydraulic, hydroelectric, and the number of engineers that we've brought to bear, I am comfortable with the due diligence that is in place and that the gravity the people are placing with this process. So um, I've had the opportunity to ask questions all along um, throughout the last 12 months, and uh, um, I appreciate the perspectives that have been brought to the room. And I see many familiar faces here again to hear what is happening next. So thank you for being involved. There are meetings that we have where there's one or two people. And so I appreciate the sensitivity that this bears for everybody. I am, I am pleased to hear that you feel that you've had your questions answered and that you are, is, this is to your satisfaction. It is not my intent to try to hold up an IGA. So I do, and I'm not going to get pinned against that, that somehow or another that the peaceful of West Wilmette are not important. I do live in West Wilmette, but I'm on the high end, so I'm a lucky one. Um, but they deserve this, and it is a public safety issue. I do not feel that I've had my questions answered at all. We sat in these chambers, and we talked about having these design, all, every stage of design, schematic design, DD, and construction documents, reviewed by this board and approved as we went along. I believe that's what you asked for. I don't think the rest of the board asked for that, though. The, the people out here feel that that was the communication that was, did they feel that we were going to get a review of these drawings? That's interesting. Okay, so we certainly left the impression to the people that have been coming to this meeting that we were going to review these drawings. I had to ask repeatedly. I did not get the last of these drawings until last Monday. I have not had my questions answered. Now, I was finally given a meeting with the engineers last Thursday, but it's pretty late in the game to be doing this. I'd like to talk about how these projects are going to be reviewed and approved. This is not, we're, we're scrambling with a, with a, a a civil engineer, we should have had him on board a year ago. We talked about a civil engineer a year ago, and now they come on board late in the game. And, you know, I appreciate the work they're doing. They're really good engineers. We're going to, you know, people are human. I get that. The, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do it, and we're going to get it done. But I'm not getting my questions. And when I, when I sit here and say, what's the update, and I find out that the drawings are out, and I, didn't, I don't know the drawings are actually being issued, we did not review, that information was kept from me. 
Can, can I ask but a question? What's the role of, of, of our engineers, Gewalt Hamilton, then, relative to what the kind of questions that Brian is asking? I think the answer is that's all the stuff they're reviewing. Yeah, so, okay, we've got somebody we've hired to do this for us. Yeah, I'm just making make, make Wait, the point. Pretty late in the game. Yeah. Not to say they're not gonna get it done. Should have been on board. I would like to have had these questions answered a long, long time. I would like to have seen the drawings. I think our executive director was put in a really bad spot because when I asked him why I wasn't asked to, to see the drawings, I was told that six commissioners told him that we were not going to see these drawings and we're not going to come to this. Well, I think thing. I think the point was that as a role, our role as commissioners of the park board, we decided that we were looking at the above ground structures and what the impact was on the park, that we were not going to take on the engineering and the, the stormwater management process because that's the village's purview. It is not our purview how they lay pipes or how they manage the stormwater. Our, our, our you made focus. A, you made a decision as to what I should see? I did not make Gordon, a decision. Well, I don't know. There were six commissioners who said we weren't going to review the drawings. So that's what I was told. What our Gordon, if you need to see our uh, financial information, you, I want you to have it. I'd be, really, I'd be really angry if somebody was preventing you from looking at financial information. No, no Preventing you for anything. So did, so did somebody tell the executive? Because that's a terrible place to put a put no, a. Right. I believe I'm, what I'm I said to you was. By this line of this is, yeah, I have no idea where we're going. From, and why are we are we at fault right at this point? And I do not remember anything about seeing the drawings or not seeing the drawings. So I don't know where you are coming from on this this argument. I can show it. Uh, it's in the meeting minutes. It's in the meeting minutes. The request to see these drawings in the design stages are in the meeting minutes. If I can point that out. Well, I think is it if is I it could design, jump in for a second. Is it design in this format or is it the stack of drawings exactly. for construction? That's a I think we should schematic try. design, design the development, has and construction documents. For the are those underground are, hangs, are those difficult terms to get? Are those those are established design terms. And, and if I could but jump in. Not to us non-engineers. <laughs> right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. The if, if, these are, if this is the storage tank that the, that the village has responsibility for maintaining and for putting in that, that is their responsibility to design that. It's not our responsibility not to oversee to it. Is it your responsibility to tell me what I should review and should not review? Is my oversight, is my oversight somehow or another subject to your review and veto? I have no experience on that. I could not, ha I could not re review those and give you any, in give back any feedback. Well, I think it's and a hydraulic engineering decision as well, right? And that's what we hired a hydraulic engineer to do. And it's also why I, I, I know from our talk with the engineers, it's they are very, very conscious of the issue of around the residents and around us, and they are doing their best to, to respond to us, and they are very cognizant of the issues that, you know, of, of creating a system that will work. Um, so I, I think by bringing this up, I mean, you are basically, in a sense, it's kind of insulting the engineers that, that the saying that they can't do this. I apologize. Were my questions insulting or embarrassing in any way on Thursday? Well, I'm not going to answer that. Thursday, no. That's not a... Oh. That's Were they embarrassing tonight? Well, they're not going to say yes or no to that, Brian. I mean, you're putting them on the spot. And I know I'm putting you on the spot. This is not easy. So I think at this point we need to start moving forward to... Um, if, if you're done, uh, having a recognition of visitors and then having a discussion around moving the IGA forward. I would like to make a motion tonight, whether or not I make it now or we make it after the IGA, I'm going to make a motion that this board review the design stages for all projects moving forward and that they, that they be allowed to review them as the dra drawings are being developed. Mm -hmm. So whether or not I wish to make a motion now, if you would like me to do one now, I can make it after the IGA vote. You can make it now. Who can make it now? Oh, oh you cannot. Okay. What's that? It's not on the agenda. It's, it's not on the I can agenda. put it into the IGA? No, Andrew, no. come up to the microphone, yeah. please. <coughs> Any 
clarify what it is you're seeking to I'm to seeking to, to have consider? this board review the design in its development and that and therefore that the community has a chance to also review the design and see the drawings and be able to comment on it in its development. I believe that would be a relevant issue with regard to our intergovernmental agreement. Sure, and, and perhaps we can we can um, hold this discussion until we get to the actual nuts and bolts of the IGA because there are provisions built into the IGA that allows for both parties to comment on the design features of the project. And we can certainly talk about that when we get to the discussion of the IGA. So I don't think a motion why don't right we do now, that sir, at that point, Brian? I think that would be the best conversation, conversation when we're looking at the document. Let's get the, the folks who have been sitting here for yeah. an hour and 15 minutes a chance to speak and ask some questions. And then we'll come back to that question. <clears throat> Just about there. Okay. With that being said, we are going to move forward to the next agenda item on our agenda, which is recognition of visitors. Um, I would like to remind everyone that they have three minutes to speak, and we ask that all your questions, comments be directed toward us, the board, not any of the engineers or anyone in the audience. Um, and please be uh, kind and considerate in your comments. And I first off, want to see if there's anyone that has a question or would like to speak to us about non-stormwater things so that they can come and get out of here. <laughs> Okay, if not, then we will open it up to all comments and recognition of visitors. Yes, sir. And if you could please state your name and address when you come to the podium. Thank you. My name is Vangelis Economo. I sent an email to the board about the funding for this project and the amenities. Um, I didn't realize that that would result in my being named in the agenda. Um, and I'm not going to repeat what was in my email, um, but as I read the IGA, I um, I don't see how it, all of the items on the amenities list that you have. I think on pages 10 and 11, add up to 3.4 million or 3.4 million that you have uh, negotiated for from the uh, village. Um, you know, I, you you are as a board conservators of the park district and of the parks that the district controls, I wish uh, to impart on to you that you should also be um, conservators of the funding for the, for the parks as well, and especially if it, in, in the way that this has come about. Uh, my concern is that when there's a pool of money available, uh, that eventually what happens is a race uh, results in finding creative ways to spend it. And that's what I want to. So the way it works concern. is, yeah, the way it works is, we will only spend the money if we do the project. It can only be used for these items listed. Right. It can't be transferred to anything else, used for operating expenses or anything like that. It's only used for the items in this project. Within, within the parks. Within that are being these affected. these specific things, not even it can't even be used on at Gilson or anything like that. It's only on these specific items, and then they only spend we only spend it or sorry we only get paid the village only spends it if we actually do that item if we decide not to do anything, we don't get any of that money. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that would like to address us? Yes, sir. May I, may I ask, so does that mean that with regard to portable generators or underground pumps, if there's extra costs, we, would, we, we, could, we could or could not pay for that out of the, uh, the three million dollars? I didn't think those items those would, would be not. paid those out would of that. Be, that's not, a, that's yeah. not an amendment. They, they would or would not? Would no, not. They, that's a village. That's a village um, item. Uh, item. Right. Yeah. Yes, can you state your name and address, please? Hello, Derek Castile, uh, 2447 Pomona Lane. Uh, my wife and I moved there in 2012 and have since added three more residents. Hmm. <laughs> um, I wanted to, uh, I'm here tonight because I wanted to share with you the gist of an email that I sent to the village of uh, well met trustees back in August and uh, some comments that I made at this microphone uh, a few weeks back related to the neighborhood stormwater tank storage project which I understand started uh, back in 2013 um, and that obviously requires your consent given that uh, the project will take place on parks that are under your jurisdiction. Um, I shared that if I correctly interpreted the data contained in the documents on the village website that Wilmette taxpayers are going to be footing a $62 million cost projected to protect 221 structures from 10-year storm events at a cost of, based on my math, $280,000 per structure 
and that the plan will offer very little protection from a 50 or 100 year storm. I also shared that I objected based primarily on the steadily worsening financial condition of our state and county and also the, vi the finances of the village. Uh, as you may be aware, the village currently, well, at least as of last year, had a $56 million unfunded pension liability to its public safety employees. I suspect that based on the events of the last week, that number has gotten a lot worse. Uh, I recently urged postponement indefinitely, but uh, here we are, obviously. Um, over the last few weeks, I've asked a number of uh, fellow Village of Wilmette residents, who, uh, many of whom say they know people who serve on the board, why on earth would they be going up for with such an expensive project with so few beneficiaries, given the uh, horrendous financial condition of the state in the county that we're in? I get two answers. Well, they've invested seven years of their time on this, and they just want to get it done. The second answer I get is there's a lack of widespread community opposition, which I expect is attributable to the fact that most folks just don't realize how expensive this is going to be. I'm here tonight to plead with you to consider that your approval enables the, the village to make what I believe residents 10 to 20 years from now will view as an imprudent or even reckless financial decision. With that, I'm asking that if any of you haven't considered the financial ramifications of this decision on future Wilmette taxpayers, that you temporarily postpone your vote to deliberate specifically on that aspect. Thank you. Thank you. Can, may I? May I? Sorry, sir. Um, uh, first off, uh, very little benefit 50 and 100 year uh, storm events. I, I would say that's actually not particularly true. The, the thing about these tanks is they'll take the, that first three inches and three and three hours off the table. So, and then whatever, yes, it will rain more than that in a 50 or 100 year event, but those extra two inches, that is the, that's the, that will still go to the streets, but that's also the first thing out. So the tank will hold it. And the tank will hold it until the streets get empty, then the tank will start to empty too. So in the event of flood situations that are beyond the 10-year, it's a good system. In my, in my mind, it was a good balance. Now, I know I sit up here and I'm not a, I'm not a stormwater engineer. I pretend to be one on TV, all that sort of stuff. So, but, uh, but in my mind, they satisfied me that there's not, not little benefit. That is actually, this is the best cost-effective benefit. So I wanted to say that. Second off, um, it, it, I, as, a, as a park board, and I will agree with my fellow commissioners here, I imagine that, uh, that, that th it's not really me, for me to say that the village is wasting your money. Uh, it is for me to, s to make sure that the parks are taken care of and that we review it. And I did want to make sure, I felt that as a resident, I want to make sure that this, uh, this design did work. And I, it is a very expensive project. And I will grant you that, absolutely. But I don't think that I can um, vote on this strictly on a uh, dollars and cents basis. That wasn't the question put before me. It has to do, can we use your parks, and if so, why? So I just wanted to answer that. I appreciate it is, it is an expensive project, and I agree with you. But I will not withdraw, uh, withhold my vote on the IGA on that basis, because that's really not the question. Now, tomorrow night in these chambers, you can you can make your argument as well. That'd be a good place. Thank you. And I think I'd actually like to pick up on that for a second as well. I agree. I think it would be entirely inappropriate for us to vote or not vote based on the underlying decision of, of the, the appropriateness of the project. That's a village decision. The village officials were elected, and you should speak to them about that. That being said, I think it's important for us all to recognize here that as this project has evolved, and we increased the capacity at Thornwood, and I believe at Hibbard, um, we were able to extend additional protection such that w this project now provides the same level of protection as the most expensive project the village originally c considered. So effectively, the village is able to offer the same level of protection to the community for approximately $30 million less by working in the parks, it, we're working with us with the park district. Is that correct, Bridget? So I, I believe within the confines of the decision before us, we're working with the community and with the village to try to you know, give as much protection as possible at the, at the lowest cost. And so in that way, I think we're being very fiscally responsible. That'd be my comment. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, well, thank you. Just 
my one uh, piece of feedback on that is that, you know, I can't help but think that the more stressed the future Wilmette taxpayer becomes, the more your park district will be deprived of future revenue. Fair enough. Thank you. Good evening. Rick Prohov, 2435 Pomona Lane. It's good to see you all again. I, I'm glad to hear that uh, some of the questions are being asked about the trees. We reversed your decision about the trees last year in part because the village was asked to respond to petitions and other measures that the public comes to view as to what you want to do or what you shouldn't do. So I'm pleased for that. And I, I want to thank Commissioner Abbott. We are not engineers but we have been trying to work with the village folks to make sure that the engineering is correct. I wouldn't agree about the transparency though, because whether it was this board or their board, we really don't feel, and I think I can speak for a number of people, we don't feel we do get the opportunities, and these meetings where we have three minutes is not input. It's really not input at all. If you cannot ask a question and you can't get a straight answer, that is not engagement with the community. You discovered engagement when 550 people within 30 days signed a petition. So I'm not going to talk too much today, but I would like to know when that $3 million figure came up, who made those presentations, who delineated bathrooms and all that stuff, if it wasn't material. If it was truly just consideration for the easement, we wouldn't be talking about what was a language change from shale to may. There's a lot that goes on behind closed doors around here. I really am convinced about that now. But I'm not going to beleaguer that tonight either. I'm not going to stand any more tonight to d depose the stormwater than we did last year. We were never against a community involvement to take care of people's problems. We don't flood, but many people do, and we came to understand that, even though we didn't know about it, till many of us, until last year. So I'm not here to, uh, to impose a restriction on anybody that would prevent these things from going forward. But I do resent the fact that it is not a transparent process. And with the village, they've only come around in the last week to sit down and have a very good productive meeting to address concerns of the neighborhood. Shouldn't have been that hard. Shouldn't have been this hard with you either. So while I look forward to coming back to hear about the park amenities to say what we would say then, I don't like the way it's been financed. It makes it look like this is not a borrowing situation for the park board for park board amenities. You're taking a line of credit that's outside the cap, I guess, and claiming that it's a village debt when it's really yours. So other than that, uh, I'm hoping that uh, the, com the comment about the route in from Birchwood, have they agreed to that? The issue is whether or not when the trucks come down Birchwood, whether they can swing around Pomona Diamond as opposed to what would be Sunday too, apparently, rumbling by within 30 feet of my neighbor's house. So those three extra citizens, you're talking about putting trucks right next to Derek's house and he has three little kids. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's not a good idea and it, it's a definitely in position on one resident over the other. We're not stopping the, the, the village from going forward the stormwater, but we do want them to be very sensitive to our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. I'm Carleen McAllister. I live at 323 Wilshire Drive East. Um, I've been at this a very long time. I started a blog around five years ago. Here's my kids in the canoe. Now they're a programmer and a freshman in college. <laughs> but they're still saying, yeah, go mom. <laughs> uh, work on the uh, whatever cause. So the fact is that 1,300 of us property owners in the west side, as you guys have all acknowledged, are suffering extreme flooding, frequent flooding. So in organizing to find some sort of solution over those five years, I did a lot of knocking on doors, so did many other people. We talked to people who were in danger of losing their homes after living here for 20 or 30 years because they just can't manage that frequency of flooding. So when 
people say, well, it's not going to do anything, eliminating that every two or three year problem is doing something. And water does cause a lot of damage. So um, it's not just the homeowners, but also the insurance companies. They sued many of the um, municipalities in Cook County, including Wilmette, after the earlier 2000s flooding, but all the municipalities said they were fixing it, so the insurance companies backed off. At this point, you have flood maps identifying exactly which properties are flooding, so not to do anything would be super irresponsible. As people pointed out, this became cost effective because by expanding the size of the tanks and the pipes going into it, it looked like engineering could provide a 10-year storm protection for the west side, which is already enjoyed on the east side for the last 20 or 30 years. So we did get more benefit from this tank <coughs> project than from the conveyance, as you said. The only thing is that there is less benefit at the increased rainfalls because you have to, if there's like a back-to-back -back storm. So that's one difference. Um, I wanted to say that community involvement is always hard. It was extremely hard for six years to come to meetings. I had to try and notify people of a vote on the first day of Hanukkah when it was like 10 degrees out, not people's favorite time to talk about storm sewers. So it's hard to stay civil and calm and work through the issues. I would just say community involvement, no matter how it's laid out, is hard. It takes time and it's work. And I appreciate everything you've done, that the village board has done, that the engineers have done. In terms of the design, obviously, it does have to be fine-tuned. And I've gotten to know civil engineers probably way more than they actually liked. Also, I've been given total tutorials on XB swim modeling. Things have moved on with computers. They don't work with like people making little hand drawings. It's like a whole modeling system. Yeah, three minutes. Two minutes. You're at, You're three, at three minutes. minutes. Oh, I'm at three minutes. So I would just like to thank you for agreeing to this intergovernmental agreement along with the school district, which voted yes today, showing that they think the students are going to be safe. And um, thank you for helping to keep this moving. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address us? My name is John Hager, and I live at 2525 Marion Lane uh, with my family since 1989. And uh, with regard to the potential uh, projects of public restrooms and uh, the fitness path, I'd like to comment. Um, about 30 years ago, the Park <coughs> District Board considered changing the nature of uh, community play fields substantially with running tracks, lighted uh, tennis courts, and, and a number of other uh, improvements. And they held about three or four hearings uh, at least. And the Wilmette community as a whole was totally opposed to changing the nature of this park. Um, I, I have a, uh, an interest in hoping that the park board will realize that this is a jewel, an aesthetic jewel, and to add structures to it is something that should be considered very carefully, particularly the, the, the restroom idea. That was rejected once before. Uh, a portable restroom it doesn't have the same uh, utility a, a, as a permanent one, but it was rejected because of the potential for unsavory activities uh, within such a larger structure. And uh, I, for one, would think that the, the temporary portable ones that they have now uh, fill the bill. Uh, with respect to the uh, running path around the park and lights, uh, I know that's only a provisional contingent uh, situation. I wasn't aware of that when a neighbor told me about this and I was almost ran down here rather than drove my car. I was <laughs> so upset about it. Putting uh, lighting into this park would really change um, the character of it substantially. There's a utility building that has lights and there's lights on the Wilmette Junior High. But other than that, it's a, it's a park that's used during the day substantially for all the activities they have. I don't know what would happen if you put a, a running path in there uh, because uh, you have cross-country uh, meets in there throughout the fall 
And I don't think those people run on running paths. I think they run on, on natural ground. Um, lights, uh, it's, it's indeterminate as to what kind of lighting would be put in there, but uh, why that would be put into the park that's basically a, a park for use during the day, um, except for dog walkers at night, it seems to me it would, would put a circus atmosphere into it. Uh, so I would, without knowing exactly what the proposal is, um, ask for hearings and deliberate consideration by the, by the people that you serve uh, before you go forward with both of these items. Thank you. So, uh, John. Um, so there are people that you know think that maybe we should get permanent bathrooms, and there's people that don't. And I can say we've gotten some emails both ways on that, and apparently we will talk about this in, in the later. With regard to lights, what I've always heard is mostly has to do with the path that runs down the middle of the park, not not necessarily play field lights, but uh, the safety of that path. Uh, that is my understanding of the concern. I'm not saying that that's that's a is necessarily a valid concern, but I don't know that anybody, I've ever heard anybody here advocate for like plain lights. But, but again, we'll f we're gonna talk about it, not tonight, we're gonna talk about another, but I appreciate your the comment. The suggestion here was for something would run down the perimeter of the, of the park, even if- That, is a, that would be a, uh, the running path is the suggestion, but again, there's no details on that. Even if you put them on the, on the uh, path that's there now, um, I think if you go over there, the lights from the junior high and from uh, the school <coughs> to the east, uh, high crest, I think provide adequate uh, lighting for the kind of, sure. of usage of that. Uh, uh, I'm not advocating for any of it. Okay. So just uh, those are my understandings of at least helping you frame where perhaps the discussion might take place, but I haven't seen anything. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Thought I saw another hand. Yes, sir. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Dennis Roberts. And li I live at 720 La Crosse Avenue. And uh, I spoke to the board earlier in terms of the concerns that I had. We moved here uh, seven years ago, and then at, uh, five years ago, I had actually worked abroad for a number of years. and. Uh, returned after my wife had struggled with the flooding in our area for two years and decided we needed to do something. So I started the process of personally doing what we could do with our structure to uh, assure that we were safe from flooding. We invested probably in the neighborhood of forty to $50,000 in new landscape, uh, rain gardens, uh, distributing the water away from our, our house itself, installing more sump pumps, uh, replacing an illegal backup pump that had been placed there by a previous owner of that house. So we, we took all of the action that we could in, uh, as individuals to protect our property, but that came to a limit. Uh, and it became very clear that there was more that had to be done and that it, that it could only be done through public means, through the city. And uh, in variance with some of the comments that have been made about input, I have to say, and I've only been involved with this for five years, and Carlene and others have been involved many, many more years than that. Um, I think that the city has been remarkable. Uh, I think the village board has been. I think the administration has been remarkable in soliciting input. I have had many opportunities, open houses, open meetings, personal consultations, <laughs> exchange of email messages. Uh, the city has really been wonderful. And the, the point here is that I think that in any kind of a community, you have competing demands, competing desires. Uh, I, as a retired citizen, I don't use the schools. I don't use the parks. I do go to the rec center every day. Uh, but I am a loyal citizen here, and I'm loyal because this community responded to my needs. Uh, I buy Wilmette whenever I can. I go to restaurants in Wilmette whenever I can. I contribute through my church to this community. I'm a member of Trinity United Methodist Church. We do the pumpkin patch. We do the best music in the North Shore. Mm -hmm. We do lots of things. I contribute because this community responded to me. And I, I feel for the people that are in opposition to the action here. I understand that because you know I had 
my own deep concerns five years ago, too. But this decision has been coming for a very long time, and it needs to be resolved. I think that there are means available to us to work on the details, as each of you has said. And I know that the city is going to continue a process to gather input and to improve this process. Are every one of us in this room going to be happy with the outcome? Absolutely not. It's impossible. But at least we've had the opportunity to offer input, and I appreciate that uh, a great deal. And just a final comment about the, the finance on this, and again, going back to the fact that I'm a retired citizen, I use certain kinds of services from the city, but not everything. I'm proud to pay the taxes that I pay in Wilmette. I'm proud to have awesome schools. I'm proud to have awesome parks. And that's all a part of contributing to the betterment of my community. And the cost of this repair to an infrastructure problem, which goes all the way back to 1958, uh, it has to be dealt with now. We can't wait another year. We can't wait another 10 years. And I, I pray that you're able to go ahead and move forward on this. And I believe that the community will be, will be behind you. We will support you. Certainly, the many people that I've talked to will be uh, singing hoorays and uh, will be very, very, very happy to have a conclusion on this. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address us? Hi there, I'm Kathleen Sullivan of 1225 Colgate Street. And I'm Gary Knight, 1215 Colgate Street. And we are here on behalf of the Colgate Street Neighborhood Association. So we do have some concerns about the current and the future decision-making process um, surrounding the stormwater management project, which some neighbors have alluded to. So we are a group that has attended almost every Park District board meeting for the past year. We watch the meetings on TV, review the meeting minutes, speak at many meetings, and have detailed email exchanges with the board and the staff. So we also disseminate information to our neighbors and we collect feedback from hundreds of our neighbors who live near Thornwood Park. So we're in the loop and yet we just feel so surprised by some of the perceived inconsistencies or the, the rush timing constraints we've seen in this recent decision making process. So for months we've asked to see the draft IGA and the project plans so we could have, we could gather public input. And apparently the engineering drawings were finalized on January 9th, but they weren't available to the public until February 7th when they were tucked into the Park District meeting agenda. So it's been 30 days since then, and we have yet to be invited uh, to a specific meeting hosted by the Park District to really discuss the project in detail. The Village recently hosted an information session on March, 2nd, March 4th in which the staff, engineers, and consultants were available to discuss details and answer on-the-spot questions. The last time the Park District hosted such an event was May 22nd, when over 70 local residents gathered in Thornwood Park to get their questions answered. And it's really only during those sessions that we residents feel heard and with the back and forth conversation. Um, you know, trust is really repaired when there's a, a two-way dialogue in the moment, um, like we had a week ago with the village. Um, and these meetings uh, at times can be difficult for us to really gather a lot of information. We kind of deliver three minute monologues and we always don't get our questions answered in real time according to the, the policies of the, the meetings. So, you know, some of our questions, you know, why is there still a request for the park from the park district for a $362,000 public restroom in Thornwood Park when almost 140 of our close neighbors have signed a petition presented to you in November to oppose this expensive amenity? Um, why is there a request, uh, you know, there's no, there's a request for the restroom, yet there isn't one for our portable generator and underground pumps. Um, you know, we've asked the park district um, every month for an opinion, um, who owns this, and you know, we were just told by President Wolf that, you know, this is a, a topic that, you know, the board really needs to make an informed decision about generators and pumps because they're really lacking cost, timing, noise, engineering constraints. For us, we feel that way about the restroom decision, yet that language still exists and is in there given all the unknowns of that. Um, so given the communication gaps that exist between the park district and the residents, you know, in many ways evidenced by tonight's attendance, you know, what real communication plan is there for the seven of you to gather information from us 
moving forward. You know, we have some, some, concerns, some concerns about section 6.1 of the IGA, which states that the park district will have 30 days to review and vote on updates from the village. So we would just like some assurance or plan for gathering public input in the future as it regards, in regards to Thornwood Park. As we've been told many times, oh, there will be time for public input. And so we'd love to know if those public input sessions are being put into the IGA. Um, or perhaps having an on-site walkthrough with engineers before the construction even starts. So as neighborhood and community members, we are not fortunate enough to have our own IGA, but we'd like to be sure our voices are heard. So in the spirit of sounding repetitive, we are providing a summary of the items that we have requested for Thornwood Park from the start of this process over a year ago and are supported by hundreds of our neighbors. Perhaps a new audience can hear our request and help with our charge. So as always, we ask for no above ground structures, a pump station to be housed underground, a portable gas generator. We want no permanent generator. Uh, we'd also love no permanent restroom. And last, that Thornwood Park be returned to its existing form and function. So thank you for your time, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. I actually have a quick comment on the communication, if you don't mind. And um, I understand that, uh, and I wasn't at the village meeting. I heard great things about it, and I heard that there was a great dialogue. <clears throat> and I know that we have had um, meetings outside of these board meetings. I guess I would encourage you to work within the structure of these meetings as much as possible. And to the extent that a separate meeting wouldn't happen, I don't think that means that we're not trying to dialogue um, with folks. I know that I've communicated often with you and with other folks with your group. Um, I know that you've come to meetings and asked questions, and we try to get those questions answered both at meetings and outside of meetings. Um, but I'm not sure the right standard is that we, on a regular basis, have additional meetings outside of our regular structure. So um, to the extent that you feel you're not able to get questions answered, you're not able to dialogue within these meetings, and I do understand that a three-minute you know, conversation seems limited, but let's try to work within these meetings and between the meetings. And if it turns out that that's inadequate, then please reach out to us. But I'd, I'd hate to set an expectation that we're not properly communicating unless we do another series of meetings above and beyond this. Does that make sense? It does. And fortunately, for those of us at Thornwood, there is time. I'm just kind of looking back at the process to inform the community play field folks and, and them getting detailed information and being able to ask a lot of questions. And I just didn't see that happening. And um, I mean, it is a fear of ours moving forward that you know, information will be coming from the village to the park district about engineering plans, and you have 30 days to respond, and that we may not know that we need to quickly gather all of our questions, and, and we don't know how to disseminate them to everyone. I mean, I will say that the meeting held this past week was, was pretty incredible to, to just spend those hours to get into the details. Um, I think to Mike's point, there's always an opportunity to come to our monthly meetings to <coughs> give input. Um, given that the time frame is 30 days there might not be time to have individual park meetings in between our board meeting and the time we, so uh, to mike's point that this is probably the best structure to give input on those things i don't know i mean we'll try to get as much input as we can from everybody well one thing um, that sounds like it might be an issue right now i guess for example would be this you know the the, the money you know like you mentioned that is not going to be there if certain projects are not going to be done so right if, if it turns out that the when the underground pump issue and the portable generator comes up, if that becomes a money issue, it seems like that should be in the IGA right now, just like the bathroom. And that way, if it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done, but the money is going to be available for it within the IGA. I think just the village like has that money available. Bathroom. That's not something that's on our... It's not, not funded through our construction now. Right. It's not a part of the IGA. It's not a part of the IGA. No. So that's no problem fund those bigger things. Those structures are built into our budget. Right. Oh. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, structures and, and the process. Um, I believe earlier people talked about uh, weekly stakeholder meetings with the village, the engineers, the park district, the school board, consultants. Uh, Mr. Prohov had asked, can residents attend? Is there a way for residents to just witness the meetings? Um, can they be videotaped? Can they, you know, is there a way for me? For it's, not, it's not something that uh, us as a seven-member board will okay. be going to weekly because that's okay. not the purview of what we do. Um, it's more of what the staff, that we have the staffs doing that. So I don't know how those are run or what the... And I don't want to make any promises on village <laughs> meetings, so, <laughs> yeah. so I I, I'm not going to answer that one either. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little high back. 
Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Brayman, village manager for the village. Um, those meetings are not public meetings. Uh, they don't include public participation, nor do they include participation from members of our village board. They're intended for the park board. Or the park board. They're <laughs> intended for village staff, the consultant engineers, school staff, and park district staff. We put together a robust communications plan throughout the project that we presented to the neighbors at our March 4th meeting. That includes having the direct cell phone number of our on-site engineer at all times. It includes weekly email blasts. It includes monthly newsletters, which I think will address Commissioner Abbott's question in terms of having Bridget at these meetings. You will have monthly updates from us on the progress. Uh, and there's a host of other mailings and other types of communication that will be going forth as this project proceeds. So we'll be taking the information from those meetings and then sharing it accordingly with the public so all members of the public have equal access to it. Thank you. Sure. And Mike? So Monday, uh, Wednesday's meeting, which, which went a long way. It was very good. And you started that meeting, you started that meeting by saying that you felt that the, perhaps that the staff had felt that they had communicated adequately with the community, but but if that the community didn't feel that they had been adequately communicated to, then you then you were going that you were there you you could only agree, and that you were there to try to fix that. Is Absolutely. That if, if residents don't feel like they were communicated with in an effective manner, then that's our responsibility to do better. And, uh, uh, and so we right. So it's kind of up to the residents. I mean, our, look, we went through ten years of lakefront, and then people said, come out of the woodwork and said we didn't know. And same thing with Stormwater. I get it up to some extent, but we have to really work hard at communication. And I appreciate, both, I really appreciated that comment on Wednesday night, because I think that really broke the ice. And you were there, and you answered questions. You, there was no out of bounds question. There was nothing that you weren't going to talk about. You were going to talk about it right then and there. It wasn't, nothing got kicked down the road. So uh, that was very good. And I'd like to see us try to follow that lead. Understood. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Thanks. Kathleen, just Thank a, a follow-up point on, on the bathrooms. Yeah. One of the things we talked about before was waiting, to, assuming we put bathrooms in community play fields, which is not a done deal yet, mm -hmm. but assuming we do, we wanted to see the experience of what happened there before the board, and it'll be a different board, mm -hmm. you know, at any point in time, you know, whenever that comes up. So, you know, it's an open issue at that point. But, you know, we, we weren't going to make a decision now. We want the money in there in case we right. do. But if we don't have the money in there, we can't do it. Right. And I, yeah. and I was here for the Parks and Rec Committee. And, and you know, at the time, the, the, the dollar amount thrown around was 100000 to $200,000. And that was kind of what the Parks and Rec Committee used to make their vote initially. And then now the price tag is 362000 over. And so I just wonder... Yeah, and, and, I, and I can't say where that number came from. I think that probably came from the village, but I don't want to throw them under the bus. But <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the number was estimated by the engineers hired by the village, confirmed by our engineers. And I think the number um, really, the, as we talked about at the Parks and Rec Committee, you'll probably remember, is driven mainly by location to uh, where water can be pulled from and where sewers can be run to. And, and at that time, we were making estimates. Yeah. We didn't know where those were in relation to the park. I do want to point out to you that with regard to the bathrooms, both in the community play fields and at Thornwood Park, yes, there is a dollar amount in the IGA that contemplates those improvements. But in our five-year plan that was passed just a few months ago, that money was also put into the five-year plan. So if it doesn't get paid for out of, the, out of the village, there was a backup plan to pay for those park improvements. So this board has talked about these things. It does seem to be a goal. It's in both budgets. But so if I could, that. but if I could clarify that as well, we approve a capital budget on an annual basis. We, do. we don't. Anything that happens beyond year one is not binding, and so while not it binding. has been discussion, it has been discussed, and it has been contemplated, it has in no way been approved at this point. I would agree, and we, that point was made. At, I made that point. I asked if I was voting for bathrooms by approving that budget, and I was told no. I was not approving that, but you understand my point. Mm -hmm. You put in both budgets, or at least it was anticipated in both budgets. And I made yeah. the same comment with respect to the IGA at the last meeting here. Well, I think, you know, and what we were, I don't think this discussion took place in front of the full board, but at the Parks and Rec Committee meeting, I think there was some discussion about, you know, the, well, there was a lot of discussion about community versus neighborhood parks. And I, I think you were the one that brought up, well, you know, it's really the baseball at Thornwood that kind of, makes people lean toward the community and, and I guess as you know uh, I mean I've lived I've lived in Wilmette for 30 years I've lived 
there on Foliate for 20 years, and I know that I know that Thornwood Park was originally it was born from a subdivided area, and anecdotally is that we got from a lot of people was they looked at the area there and said there's just not enough we need a park here so they, they literally took something that was subdivided turned it into a park so to me that it's born a neighborhood park from that standpoint and i look at it like we've hosted the little guys to play baseball for you know i don't know it's 50 years or whatever that it's been there and it's a pleasure you know and and they if they get it out of the infield it's quite an accomplishment <laughs> you know, but you know in my opinion it doesn't necessarily raise it to the community park standard so i think maybe that's where the vision of of the people that are closest to it and and the way they look at it as opposed to maybe people that come there look at it and uh you know, and, but also it just goes along with the, the whole thing. The 80 people that showed up at the park for the informational meeting, as I, I know there was at least one commissioner there, and I, you know, the people who walked out of there was like, wow, people just, they love this park. They just want it the same. And that's pretty much how they were sent home. Like, okay, don't worry, this stuff's going underground. And you know, I, I think that's really the, the gist of all this, is just, you know, we're talking about things that don't, fit in with that and, and I think that's the concern and the, of the people that really love it and you know that's that's the main point thank we you. hear you yeah. <laughs> thanks thanks thank you is there anyone else that would like to address us okay hearing none <coughs> anyone going once going twice <laughs> all right hearing none we will move forward to unfinished business under unfinished business we have a resolution all right, I'll, I'll make a motion for consideration of resolution 2020-R-1, a resolution approving the terms and authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement between Wilmette Park District and Village of Wilmette for the construction, operation, and maintenance of a series of underground stormwater reservoirs and other ancillary improvements in portions of community playfields, Hibbard Park, and Thornwood Park. Second. Are there any comments or questions regarding this resolution? Or Brian amendments? Yes. Um, section 6.1. Um, I would like to include in here that the park board will be given presentations uh, on the design of each of these parks uh, as the design progresses, specifically at the end of schematic design for approval, at the end of design development for updates and at the end of construction documents for approval. Andrew, can you ex let us know if that's in there currently? So as the agreement is currently drafted, it contemplates a back and forth between the parties. There's an initial, the, the village presents their plans for a given park location. There's a 30 day re review, fear, review period for the park board to review and provide comments back to the village. The village then will address those concerns. If there's errors, if there's changes, if there's questions, comments, they will then provide an updated document back to the park district for an additional 30-day review period. Again, there can be back and forth an interactive process through that, then with the plan to arrive on final plans at the end of that 60-day period. Is that, is that the way this is written? Yes. And just to clarify, originally the language included the designee as the executive director and at Brian's request, this was changed to the park board. Is that correct? So it will come to us yes. as a group. We, we did change it to include the park board. Uh, and I believe in a very early um, agreement even had it at a 15 and a 15. And I, That's and what I recall. And we extended it to we 30 and 30 to it. accommodate park board meeting schedules and, and such. Yep. I want to make. Yes, so the, the exception is that the community play fields plans are already considered in final form. They're already bid out and on the streets. Um, and, and I believe, um, and I don't want to speak for them, but I believe village staff was commenting that there is the possibility for changes or tweaks to those plans as we go along. Um, but I think the overall structure um, of those plans is in final form. So yes, so that yeah. is the exception with, with respect to community play fields. Um, and I believe that was driven um, in part by the timing schedule of when construction needed to start. Um, when the village had access to aspects of community playfield, um, partially driven by the school, 
Um, if I'm, I'm saying something out of line, Mr. Stein can correct me. So, Andrew, yes. so I just want to be clear on this. I don't want to be any confusion later on, like that's not what we said and that's not what we meant. That, that this agreement means that we will get a review at the end of schematic design, and I want Bridget to hear that, okay? Or uh, for each of these parks, and that we will get an update, a design development, and that we will get another chance of approval at the end of construction documents. That that is what this means. Your interpretation is that is what is what this means. I would Actually, not. I, I would not agree with the time frames. I would agree that there's the village has an obligation to present what they view are final plans to you. That prevents you with an initial opportunity. Simply final plans, not not uh, not in progress review. There's two options. Yes, there's there's two periods of review. They'll present the documents to you which they believe are in final form. You'll have the f an initial opportunity within 30 days to review and comment on those. Yes. The can then address those. They'll come back to you. You have a second bite the apple so to speak you can provide additional comments and then with the goal towards getting to final plans within 60 days so there would not be as contemplated in this agreement a, a review at uh, early stages of, des of schematic design so in other words we have to wait until they spend all the money doing the design drawings doing 100 percent drawings and then and only then we will get to be able to review the drawings the language was drafted in its current format to pro provide flexibility to not pin you down to a specific schedule. I'm, I'm sure the village would, would welcome informal comments. Um, if there's something that the board wanted to build, again, more feedback, I would hope or think that as the village is developing these plans, there's going to be communications to make sure, like you said, they don't spend a whole bunch of money on plans that you guys are going to throw out the door. Uh, but as at least currently drafted, um, the goal is to provide flexibility to the parties to provide meaningful opportunity for review, but also be mindful of the timing here and, and making sure that we can actually not get lost in, in micromanaging and nitpicking the plans, but provide a window to get the plans from draft form to final form so that the project can move forward. I wouldn't presume to criticize you for nitpicking an agreement. You are a lawyer, an attorney. I am your lawyer. That, and, that is and I can tell you we've spent considerable amount of time working on this and, and our efforts to shift as much of the risk and responsibility as we could to the village. I appreciate protect that. The district. Um, I, I appreciate that. And yet my expertise isn't law. I think that's clear. My expertise is engineering. And my promise to the community was I would use those skill sets on their behalf. So I take, take offense at the idea that somebody might be nitpicking the plans when they view that there is their oversight and their review of the plans on the I apologize side. for my word choice if it was offensive. Unfortunately, I think it is sometimes, your word choice is sometimes echoed here on this side of the, of the, the dice. So I'm <laughs> particularly sensitive to that. My that apologies. Term. I appreciate that. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so what you're saying here is the question isn't put to you in terms of the interpretation of this agreement, because it be, could be interpreted several different ways, right? It's th th you interpreted it one way, and then you said it could be interpreted another way in terms of when we would get a chance to review it. My I question I is to the board. I don't know that I agree with that characterization. I think it can be interpreted one way. I, I think the way you were describing it is not how it's drafted. Okay. So my question is to my own board, because so perhaps we need to, if, if, if my argument is to, is to actually be adopted by this board, there might need to be some, some redrafting of this language here, right? So my question is to my own board, what is the intention of our review? Uh, what kind of oversight? I don't know that the village has any problem with us taking a look at these drawings as they are being created so that we may we, we, you know, so we may comment on them, so we're not hiring engineers two weeks before they're you know, going to start the project, so that we actually can work together. And that's an open question. We're, we are, we're reviewing this, so it's relevant to the discussion of this IGA. Anybody like to, and, and are you preventing me from reviewing these drawings when I think it's prudent to review them? I, I, I believe really that we hire engineers on our behalf, um, again, I'm not an engineer, I don't believe any of us are, but you, Brian, so I don't feel I have the knowledge to review in engineering drawings with any sense of accuracy, so I believe that we as a board hire an engineering firm to do that on our behalf, and I'm very comfortable with them looking yeah. at them and reviewing them and letting us know whether they're accurate and 
in our best interest. Very interesting. Gordon, you are a CFO, and I am not an accountant or a CFO or anything, but I would never, I would never deny you the right to get, go into any file in this park district and look at anything on behalf of the community, because that's your oversight responsibility. Brian, there's limits on what I would ever ask for <coughs> that I've never <coughs> asked for, I think, the level of detail that you're asking for. In the, in and the I, am, I would not presume to tell you what the limits of what you should or should not ask for, and yet you put that, you put that on me, that you feel that you can decide I, what Brian, I should I review and when. I on you. What I, you're accusing you me of are, doing something You are limiting done. my ability to, to I, provide the oversight. What have I, what have well, I done to have done that. Of anything? Nothing. So I'd appreciate you taking that back. No, I'm not going to take it back. I would like to see these drawings as they are being developed. I think the community deserves to see these drawings as they are being developed. What, what was our, the engineers we've hired as our representatives, is that not a conversation you can have with them? Can I? I don't know. I haven't seen, I don't know the agreement uh, between Andrew, us and our engineers. Um, from a Can I? Because I just finally got a chance to talk to engineers who got put yes. on the job two weeks ago. Board reviews uh, the drawings. Doing a really, we doing a good job a of trying to, to play catch up. Uh, we contemplated that, um, and we built language in specifically saying that despite your review and comment on documents, you're yeah. not responsible for the end result. Yeah. As, a, as, a, as a board, so I think we have to be cautious about what we might be exposed to in terms of um, life safety or areas which are not our expertise in terms of hydraulic engineering. There's no responsibility, no. We, we do not assume any responsibility oh. for reviewing drawings. We are not the, what's called the engineer of record. Understood, right? We're not no, the engineer of record. We don't pretend to be. Therefore, we have zero responsibility with regard to our review and our comments. So the, the, it's, the law is very clear about where the responsibility lays. I, mean, I, I can explain it all to you if you want me to, but I mean, seriously. Seeing, seeing drawings and, and as they are being developed would mean nothing to me. I could provide nothing. That's not you know, the same thing as it not meaning anything to me. Wait, why are well, you then you keep the tone, please, respectful. I mean, you're saying this, but that, you know, I, I, I am trusting, I am counting on the engineers that we have hired, and I'm at counting on the engineers that the village have, has hired to, in, to develop plans that, that, that work for this project. And seeing them as they are developed, it, to me, as, it means that I, they, it's not, nothing to me. I cannot, I cannot comment on them. I have no knowledge of that. Perhaps you can. Perhaps you can try to work with our engineers to see these these um, exhibits, see these plans. It doesn't do anything for us. Apparently, I need your permission in order to see these no. drawings. No, oh, that's hurtful I don't language. Think that's See, the fact that you don't need to see these drawings is fine, and you get a vote. In the end, you get to say, I trust these engineers, Brian, I believe that you are wrong. You get to say that. That is fine. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But I don't think any commissioner should be denied the opportunity to took, take a look in the areas that they feel, one, they were elected to take a look into, and be denied their, their oversight responsibility. But if you wish to deny that of me, or you're going to vote for this thing, and that's, and that's your interpretation of it, I don't know, talk to these folks out here. I, you know, that's why I, look, one big reason I'm here, I, I'm not out in the hallway yet, but I'm in the corner here, but I'm going to do my job as I see fit, and my, as I see fit is to provide that level of oversight. I don't think what I did the other day with the engineers, it was simply it was a lot of good questions. They're great engineers. I can come in here, I can talk to the community, I can say they're doing a good job. Catching up should have been done earlier, but they're but they're doing a good job. That that's important. Important to me. I hope it's important to them. Hope I hope it's important to you. I'm going to jump in for a second. I I'm not sure where other people on this board are, Brian. Um, you and I spent some time taking a look at the uh, um, the drawings that that we were given. <clears throat> I've read my share of construction drawings. I enjoy um, looking through them. I. Um, I did have some questions which I felt um, um, were answered to my satisfaction. I think the question here is not whether you're allowed to, able to, not allowed to. The question is whether we are going to require the village in this agreement to provide that level of detail. And I don't feel that that's necessary. If you want to explore that level of detail, 
I don't have any problem with you doing it. I don't think anyone else here does, and I think that you should have conversations with the village and with the village engineers and with our consultants to access those documents so that you can review them and you can ask questions as you see fit. But as far as the question of whether we are going to require in this document that the village provides us this amount of information at each step along the way, Quite frankly, my concern is that it has a greater risk of slowing the process down. And, you know, uh, Kathleen uh, stood up um, with respect to Thornwood Park. I think that, you know, those folks are very concerned about how we're going to have a conversation about whether or not a bathroom is going to go in at that park. Or if we do, in fact, have to have access points um, in, in a tank, where those access points are going to be and how that's going to affect uh, the residents' use of the park. I'm very interested in those questions. As a matter of fact, as, um, as uh, we were hearing the presentation earlier this evening, the vent for the middle tank was in a place that I didn't realize. Um, it had been moved at one point, and I had some concerns about it, so I was quietly having a question, a conversation with Steve. As it turns out, it's been addressed. It's in a much better location for me uh, for long term. Those are the kinds of questions that I'm very interested in exploring and addressing and, and looking at how they're going to affect our parks for 5, 10, 50, 100 years or perhaps longer. Um, but I personally have, have no concern, no problem with you delving into the plans and asking questions. I don't feel the need to require that in this agreement. So that's where there I would come out on this. I think you've made some characterizations about what, what each of us have told you you can or can't do. So I just wanted to clarify my opinion with respect to that, just so you're aware. In order for me to review these drawings, I have to get them. I didn't get the final set until a week ago. I believe that the I village made them public on the website that anybody in the village could, could get them. You could have gotten them off the website. It was all on the website. I pulled it up. I need these. Well, but is it... You know, this is... I mean, this... Uh, you know, listen to yourself. I mean, seriously. You're arguing with me about calm, how... Calm, Why are you calm. You don't need to yell. Because when we sit here, like a year ago, and said, well, we should do that, I said, we, I just, my expectation is that we're going to review these, uh, these designs as we go through. And not only doesn't that happen, but... But and they hear it. It's in the meeting minutes. It doesn't happen. But I gotta like keep sending email after email saying I need these drawings. I need these drawings. I don't. I'm not. They're all marked up. I'm not going on my phone or on some computer and marking up the drawings. That's not how I review drawings. It's not how I can do my job. I need actual drawings. And they were not. It was, it was very difficult to get them out. Now, if you're saying that I should feel free to have these conversations and you have no objection that's to, to, to reviewing these drawings, that's something, at least. I don't wish to be prevented from reviewing drawings. I don't know, Andrew, you're our, you're, uh, you're our attorney. My question to you is if, uh, if somebody wants to look in a file, no matter how deep, and there, we, this board is the park district, where a park district commissioner wishes to get information. Should, they be, should other commissioners tell them where the limits of their, their review are? It's hard to answer that in the general topics. There'd be certain things that I would push back on if you were looking to gain complete access to. But looking here to the agreement, I think what we're talking, nobody's trying to limit your ability to review documents. What we're trying to do is streamline and focus the common process. And yet I would interpret that, that they are limiting my ability. When I don't get the drawings until a week before this meeting, I am being limited in my ability to review these drawings and to do my okay, job. So I don't I view that as transparency. I can speak to that, but I can, I can speak to the language in this document, and in particular 6.1, which is providing you a guaranteed minimum of 30 days to review and comment documents, to submit those comments to the village, to allow the village to attempt to address those comments, and then have an additional 30 days to again review and comment on those updated documents. So in terms of our promise to the community to be open and transparent and allow them input, do you, do that, do you feel that's sufficient time for the community to come in and provide? And prov if we started earlier, for instance, wouldn't the community have more time to, to comment on Perhaps, that? Perhaps, but it's not, it's not my job to, to decide how It is how my job. Is. And I'm not trying to tell you. I'm trying to just explain what the document is, what it says and what it doesn't say. Would anybody like to amend this section, or should we move no. forward with this? All right. I, I don't know that there's any consensus for amending this section, Brian. Do you have other points in the IGA you'd would like to discuss? No. 
Are there any other comments or questions regarding the IGA? Hearing none, may we have a roll call vote on the motion? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Murdoch? Yes. Commissioner Schisler? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Goble? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. The IGA or the resolution is approved. Thank you. We have approved the IGA for the stormwater. Thank you all for being here. I don't know that y'all need to <laughs> stay. And thank you for all the input from everybody coming tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Can we take you. a quick five minute recess and we'll adjourn for five minutes, please? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Got some drainage. I'm sure. Pardon me? Uh, yeah, we're cutting out some drainage. <laughs>
bodies are very protective of their power. Okay. Uh, given away so freely. Uh, Bridget, thank you. Uh, thank you, Bridget. I'm glad that he's taking a piece of the water for me. Kill the coronavirus. Kill the coronavirus. <laughs> Just kidding. Elisa, I'm sorry I missed you. We will reconvene our regular board meeting. Uh, it's 9.56. Uh, next on our agenda is the approval of the voucher list. I move to approve the voucher list in the amount of $1,877,805.39. A copy of which will be, to be attached to, be attached to the permit, permit part of the permanent record. Yeah, you should do this because you always read it. And I second. <laughs> I second. Are there any comments or questions on the voucher list? Two quick questions. Yes. The the two roofing expenditures for the rec center, was that for last year or this year? That was year? a Just project that was being finished up right at the end of the year there. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the boiler for Centennial with Jensen Plumbing? That was um, things started breaking down, just had to get it fixed. Okay, so which, bo which, repair one, more in which part of the Centennial was it? Both boilers at the ice rink. Got it. Ice rink. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? questions? Um, I sent Steve a, a couple, couple questions. questions that you can respond to all if you want later. Sure, we'll do. Yeah, okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Murdoch? Yes. Commissioner Schisler? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Goebel? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. The voucher list is approved. Thank you. Next up is our executive director's report. Uh, uh, leading off, uh, we've we got a little bit of information in here about COVID-19, otherwise known as uh, coronavirus. Uh, as you all are aware, this is something that there is no playbook for at this point. We're all learning together internationally on this topic. Um, there is attached to my report a um, joint press release issued by the Village of Wilmette, the public and private schools, the Park District, the library. We all met last Tuesday, March 3rd to share thoughts, share decision-making processes, to um, decide that it's probably best that we all continue to inform each other, work together to, uh, as much as possible, reduce the impact of community spread of the coronavirus. Um, as uh, more information becomes available, our decisions will be made uh, about closure of facilities in part or in all, uh, but at this point, uh, we are not at that point. We're not making that decision, and we are still fully operating. We have added additional uh, cleaning at all of our facilities, sanitizing of all um, hard surfaces. Uh, we have worked with our overnight cleaning crew that we contract uh, a lot of our work to to make sure that uh, their processes are good, their products are effective, um, and uh, we feel like we're doing everything we can at the moment, and uh, we're monitoring everything very closely. Moving on from coronavirus. Before we move on, could we? Before we, we move we, on from I coronavirus. I apologize, yes. So we, we didn't have a chance to talk about Correct. this at Parks and Rec and, and decided that this was the better place. But uh, um, obviously, we all appreciate the communication you're providing to us and to the community. This is obviously a topic for, for so many people in so many different ways. And, and obviously, information about cleaning and prevention is very important. But I think at some point, we should have some conversations about um, even if 
ultimately it turns out we don't need to close facilities, which would be very positive, and we're all hoping that's going to be the case. We may find that there are people who are uncomfortable um, um, attending events, attending classes, et cetera. We should take a look at our refund policies. Um, we should look at what the financial impact on the district might be, and we should explore you know, what coverage we might or might not have, whether we are required to do these things, we set a policy that we're going to do them, or if people self-select out, because obviously we, this, there is a tremendous amount of uncertainty and we do want our, um, our residents to feel comfortable. So I, I would hope that's something that we would take a look at. And we are. Yeah. We are internally Great. taking a look at all that. Uh, Thank as you. far as insurance coverage is concerned, uh, we do not have insurance coverage for this. There are very specific criteria that has to take place before the business interruption insurance would be um, invoked and it would require us to have a facility with the contagion present within the building and be shut down by a governmental body outside of us as such as the state or the county health officials. That's the only way uh, business interruption insurance it would uh, come in. So in the event that we do close for public health concerns, there will be a financial impact mm -hmm. for sure because we do have a very generous refund policy uh, on an everyday operating basis. If someone says, I no longer want to be in a program or be a member at a facility, I want to cancel, we our current policy already refunds them for any future classes they haven't attended. So we're very generous there to begin with. Uh, we're still abiding by that policy. We are taking a couple calls today along those lines at mm -hmm. people asking those questions. Um, and in the event that we do close, we will extend all memberships for the time that we're closed. We will be refunding all classes uh, that do not take place to those uh, families because that, again, would be in line with our prorated refund policy concept. Um, and uh, we're working through um, more on the staff side of things, how to um, make sure we're not disincentivizing people to stay home when they're sick and, and things like that. Great, Steve. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. No problem. Any other questions on coronavirus before we move on? No. All right. Um, this past Sunday, March 8th, Michi at Michigan Shores Club, Go Green Well Met held their annual Going Green Matters event. This was just yesterday. Uh, I attended, I saw uh, a couple commissioners there as well, many members of the community, uh, and it was, as always, a, a very nice event, um, and they couldn't have had better weather for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other thing in my report that is not the Stormwater IGA is a license agreement with the Avoca School District under new business. Um, as uh, many of you will recall, for a long time, since 2004, we have maintained the property, and in exchange for that, we've had use of the property, although the Avoca School District owns the property. Um, during their consideration of what to do with the Avoca Center, they decided that uh, why are we not using our own property as a possible revenue source, so they canceled our agreement with them. Um, they have since signed an agreement with uh, a couple different entities for the use of the property, um, but a good portion of the property will not actually be used by one of those entities until April of 2021. So we are signing and we are hoping that you'll approve this agreement. The Avoca uh, School Board's going to approve it this week as well. That's anticipated to allow us to, again to maintain the property get use of the property because it increases our field space capacity while the community play fields project is ongoing so we can uh, try and meet all of the demands of not only our programming district 39's programming wilmet baseball's programming because uh, all these community resources are shared by all these different groups are and just any? one yeah, one comment on this because obviously your report is, is a public document just to clarify you referenced that um, the areas of the fields that are under construction by North Shore Country Day School. I happen to be on the board at North Shore Country Day. I was a little bit involved with this. They're not doing any of the construction. They just simply have a rental, uh, a long-term rental agreement with Avoca. Avoca is doing all the construction. Just a clarification. Thank you. And it would just be field space, like you said, to supplement the field space that's going to be under construction. Correct. So It doesn't solve all the problems, doesn't but give everyone what they want, but it helps. But it gives us a little more mm -hmm. space. Does anybody have any other questions on this? Mm -hmm. and, and there's no a comment, but could you give us a comment? Is there any fee? Are we paying anything for this? Just in exchange for our service of maintaining the property. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. Um, we will move along to, uh, any other questions for Steve? 
on anything? Okay, we'll move along to uh, committee reports. Lakefront Committee, you're up first. Um, we met last Monday. Um, for the most part, we're in planning, although we did get a staff report. Two significant th uh, things are coming up on our calendar this, um, sorry, <coughs> this coming uh, month. Uh, first off, we will, unless Steve wants to correct me, but I believe that the shoreline erosion consultant will be attending the next uh, <coughs> lakefront committee meeting. Correct. And uh, so we're going to get started. Uh, on the one hand, I'm excited to get started. On the other, it, we're all concerned. Uh, obviously, we've been down there, and it's um, it's going. We are going to have our challenges, both in terms of staff and in terms of the community and those who those who wish to enjoy the lakefront this summer. And I do hope that we will all, um, uh, in the spirit of cooperation, uh, try to have a good summer down there, despite uh, considerable erosion taking place. The, certainly, South Beach has been very badly impacted by the erosion, and there will be um, concerns for safety, and I'm sure the staff will handle it quite well. But it isn't, it's, not, it's not your old beach. Uh, the master plan, uh, we will be getting revised proposals from the two remaining master plan um, uh, design firms on April 1st. Uh, this, these proposals will go to the entire board uh, because the, uh, and we would like to get comments back on that because on April 6th, the next lakefront meeting, um, the committee would like to review the proposals with your input and uh, provide, because everybody's interested. So with your input, uh, provide a recommendation to the full uh, board, which should take place um, seven days after on the 13th. Uh, sailing registrations are open, and we're looking forward uh, to the summer, despite whatever challenges. We have a, certainly have a beautiful cheap beach house, so looking forward to the summer. Uh, is there any questions? No, thank you very much. Uh, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec met earlier this evening. We had a detailed presentation concerning racket sports and the centennial operations. Uh, very informative. We also um, had a brief discussion about mobile customer interface. We didn't make any decisions on that, but we're going to continue to investigate uh, to offer more options for our residents. Uh, we had Sid Tepps and Matt Liepert from the Wilmot Baseball Association come in and uh, ask for uh, some potential flexibility uh, with some of our scheduling. Obviously, as Steve had just said in his report, we're trying to um, you know, create some additional field space during the construction of community play fields. There's going to be challenges uh, this coming year, but with respect to baseball, there will certainly be challenges in the two subsequent years because they'll be impacted by both of those projects as well. And uh, we're going to um, work to see how we can accommodate them. And then finally, we welcomed Sarah Seiki um, as our new gymnastics um, coordinator? Supervisor. Supervisor. Uh, very exciting. And that's my report. Does anybody have any questions? No. Thank you very much. We'll move along to Golf Operations Committee. Yes, Golf Operations Committee met last week and uh, discussed preparation for the spring season. The course was able to open over the weekend due to the unseasonably nice weather. I think it's the earliest in recent memory. Um, typically, the course opens around the, uh, the 17th St. Patrick's Day in honor of probably green grass. <laughs> um, we spent a lot of time discussing the Card Path project, which is one of the capital improvement projects planned for later in the year. Uh, at this point, the design has been um, drafted, and the staff have made you know, several uh, several iterations to find the right uh, balance of improving the course for those who prefer to ride in carts, as well as those who will, um, you know, choose walking on, on the given days. But uh, broadly speaking, it's going to improve the number of playable days at the course. Um, the project is anticipated to go to bid in the April-May time frame and is to be under construction at the end of October. Um, and uh, from a signage perspective, we spent some time discussing both signage on Lake Avenue potentially as well as wayfinding signage, which is similar to the brown um, sort of um, signs that you see that mark um, key areas of interest. So. Um, some nice progress in those areas. And then the last item is that the budget um, for 2019 or the year-end financial statements were reviewed. And um, the uh, golf operations and led by the staff met or exceeded their expectations in, in many areas. I think the one highlight as we look forward, there's several highlights, but one I want to bring, uh, bring forward is that the programming continues to show more and more youth involved as well as families involved in the course, which is nice for future year, years of golf. Um, 
And then on a, on a community note, the there have been some bald eagle sightings at the golf course, which oh, is cool. really unique. Oh, that's, that's um, that's Superintendent awesome. Nick Morfisi has taken a number of photos, and they're, um, it's unclear if they're migrating or here to stay, but they've been around for a few months. So um, you know, cool. if you're interested in going, you can probably take a chance and walk at the golf course. Have they nested? They've nested? They believe that they are, um, they've been there for several years, several months. So. They've not found a nest, but we think probably there's one nearby. It's a really big nest. That's really cool. <laughs> really big, really big wings. <laughs> yeah. Golf, by the way, was awesome on Sunday, and there was over 200 rounds played. That's nice. It was nice. Uh, really pretty fantastic. Yeah. Any Let's hope questions? for more good weather. Yes. Yeah. Any more questions for golf? Thank you very much. Move along to Financial Planning and Policy Committee. Okay, the Financial Planning and Policy Committee did not meet. However, we have a few items of note. One sitting in the far back corner is Sheila Foy. Sheila is our new superintendent of finance. She's a Wilmot resident. Her kids have actually worked for the Park District in the past. And she's got a really interesting background, although not in the government nonprofit area. So she'll be able to, I think, bring some different perspectives maybe into the, the job because of that different background. So uh, when do you start? Okay, all right, Coming great. Up. Wonderful. Um, we also uh, received the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for 2018 for the 10th mm. straight year. Wow. So well no done. pressure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well done to the staff. Yeah, yep. Uh, Move running machine. Yep, and then uh, we have engaged Lauterbach and Amen for uh, the audit for this year and three years. Three years. Um, based on discussion we had a month Prior or two month. ago. Yeah. So that is it for the Finance and Policy Committee. Any questions for the Finance and Policy Committee? Thank you very much. We'll move along to new business. Under I, new business, I have gonna, something. Oh, I would like to no, welcome no, no. <laughs> welcome back our commissioner back. Yes, and she you. was very well, uh, very much missed. Mm -hmm. And just uh, say how thankful we are that she is glad to be back. Yeah, back in our ranks. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. thank so. you. Here, here. Welcome back. Yes. Um, under new business, we have. Uh, uh, Resolution license or a agreement. license agreement. Um, I'm not sure what the wording. So I take is. motion to authorize. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the executive di executive director to execute a license agreement, setting the terms of both the use and maintenance of property owned by the Avoca School District until April 2021. I'll second that. Thank you. And this is something we discussed under our executive director's report. It just gives us access to some more field space at no cost. Um, to us, um, we're just helping them with some lawn mowing. Mowing. Any mm -hmm. other questions or comments? No. May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Murdoch? Yes. Commissioner Schisler? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Goble? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. The agreement is approved. Thank you. Any other new business before the board? Hearing none, I move to adjourn. All those in favor? Second. Or second? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank Third, you very four, much. Fifth. <laughs> Aye. Okay.